Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yay. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. Game over, man. <laughs> Game over. <laughs> Our podcast is kind of like eating a beef. Oh, awesome at first. God. And then it's goddamn monotonous. <laughs> Nathan, are, are you okay? <laughs> I, well, first of all, agree to disagree, but <laughs> on all counts. Oh, no. I don't believe a word I'm saying, by the way. I'm no, yeah, just sure. quoting the movie. Of course. Of course. Uh, and this, <laughs> this is a stay alive production. <laughs> oh, my God. We got to talk about that, too. This is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinemas or gaming's <sighs> bleakest endings. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think you overestimated how much I'm going to have to say about this movie. <laughs> I overestimated how much I would have to say about this movie, and I picked it. So This is barely a motion picture, Dude, and, I, and I don't even mean the fact that it's like 80 minutes soaking wet. This movie is incomprehensible. Yep, like, yep. I dare you, listener, to watch this movie and get every aspect of it, because characters are mumbling their lines. <laughs> no one's making eye contact. Everyone's just kind of putting around. Like, they never get around around to explaining the plot yeah like we, we, we i mean we will we'll get into it but like I, you know i'm gonna say this up front <laughs> i have seen this movie once before uh-huh. and it was the director's cut mm-hmm. i realized halfway through this film because the version i watched was 20 minutes longer mm-hmm. and actually tells you the backstory of the film oh, like yeah. it is it is bonkers that this is just a, kind of a collection of scenes and then it ends <laughs> it is barely a movie and we could not do this alone. Yeah. Mally is unfortunately not here. Last I saw him, he was playing uh, Stay Alive, actually. He was yeah. playing it on, on his PlayStation 1, right? Was it was it 1? It was PlayStation 2. He oh, was really two. excited to find this uh, underground game. <laughs> God, I'm. Look, can I go ahead and apologize? I'm sure we're going to do a big disservice to gamers uh-huh. as a culture on this episode. But uh, it's that just it just sounds like such a slur to say <laughs> gamer, like right? Like it doesn't. I write about gaming for a living. That is my job, <laughs> and every time I write it, I write that word. I feel like a twinge of regret. <laughs> I, I feel like you got to go <sighs> every time you fucking write it, right? Yeah. <laughs> But we couldn't do this alone. We had to, uh, you know, this is funny. We're doing two video game movies for me, for my picks back to back. I know. And so we have a, a, a DLC, a character <laughs> that we've unlocked for this one. And let me introduce our guest. He is one of the co-hosts of the Cinema Psycho Show. Please welcome Brian Connington. Hello. And on, let me give you let me give you a proper introduction. Oh, Hold on. Okay. There yeah. we go. <laughs> so you guys got sound effects and uh-huh. shit, man. Oh, we're, we're next level over here. We don't have any of that. We're slumming it, you know. But thank you. Thank you for having me. I've, the whole time you're talking about this movie, I've been wanting to like chomp in, <laughs> going like, I want to say something, but I can't. You are such a polite guest. Absolutely. Because I'm like, I really want to say like, this movie fucking sucks and it's the only one from Disney that's a slasher. I yes. Know. Which I'm sure we'll talk about. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So you had us on your show. <laughs> yes. This is what I was going to talk about. Yeah. You had Jawed over there at the Cinema Psycho show. Yeah. And you reached out to us and said, hey, guys, we, this might be a good collaboration. And you brought us on to talk about the Adam Sandler movie, Jack and Jill. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> no, no, no. It's totally fine. Because <laughs> for those who haven't listened, I might have some hot takes for that movie. You but certainly did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say this movie, way worse than Jack and Jill. Oh, I, I disagree. <laughs> 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 yeah, Jack and Jill, man, like that was that was a <laughs> slog. Yeah, but at least that's kind of a movie with scenes <laughs> and lighting and editing and direction. There's some. I mean, it's bad. Oh yeah, but those things are there. <laughs> to be fair, there was way more acting in Jack and Jill yes. than uh-huh. this one. Uh-huh. This one was just like, here's the line, stupid, read it, <laughs> <laughs> and not even read it, just kind of muffle it. Like, yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah. In a truly bonkers cast. Oh, yeah. To hand these nothing lines to, you know, I, I did wonder if this was revenge <laughs> for making us watch Jack and Jill. I, I was trying to figure it out, but I was also like, is Dustin mad at me? Like, what did I do? You emailed me about this a couple months ago, and uh-huh. I was like, I had never heard of this movie. Oh, he was like, oh, dude, it's so bad. And I'm like, okay. I mean, I'll, I'm all, I'm game for anything. Uh-huh. Sure. So, like, yeah. And it's a good pun, by the way. You're game for this movie. I'm uh, game for anything. <laughs> 
I'm almost positive I saw this thing in the theaters when I was, I guess this came out in 2006, I would have been 15. Yeah. yeah. I'm almost positive I saw it in the theaters. And I remember, of course, being dumb as a 15 year old, being like, that's pretty good. <laughs> and then I hadn't seen it again until this rewatch. And man, I had a rough time on this rewatch. Me too. Because it was rough. I tried watching that unrated director's cut, but uh-huh. it is only available on standard definition DVD. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it is horrible to look at. Like, it's an affront to the eyes, <laughs> to all my senses, honestly. Just like I told Nathan, I was like, I can't see anyone's eyes. Yeah. Like, nobody said everyone's eyes were black. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's eyes are black. I had to 30 minutes in be like, I, I never do this, but I went to Amazon and I just rented the theatrical version. Oh. And I was like, this doesn't look any better. Like, I still can't fucking see anything. Uh, I found it on Daily Motion. <laughs> oh, my God. That's, that's where I found this movie. That seems right. I bet it was still up from like 2007, too, when yeah, the DVD first came out. It was like in four by three. And I'm just like, hey, Wolf. yeah, we're going to just take it. It's just old uploads of episodes of the thick of it yeah, on uh-huh. Stay Alive. That's it. Yep. To your point, Nathan, about the theatrical version making no fucking sense. Mm-hmm. I'm 30 minutes into the unrated version. I switch over. And you're right. They drop so much of the plot yeah there's entire characters cut out yep. in the theatrical version the whole backstory about this thing is cut out yeah so here's the thing this movie was a hollywood pictures production mm-hmm. and if you don't remember hollywood pictures they were kind of prevalent in the late 90s early aughts not very long mm-hmm. it's kind of an offshoot uh, of disney they were basically like what if we do touchstone also yeah like, yep. it was just like let's spread our money around yeah <laughs> <laughs> and this was, as you mentioned, Disney's only slasher film, technically. Yeah. So I would almost argue that just the word slasher just being in that title. I don't know if I agree with that. But well, not to inject, does this mean that Elizabeth Bathory in this version is a Disney princess? <laughs> oh, 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 you know what? That makes her a Disney princess. I, I, I kind of like this idea. This is the one they forgot. This, this is, is like it. that Kennedy sister that they locked away. <laughs> She's walled up in Cinderella's castle. Uh-huh. <laughs> They're ashamed of it. They don't want her out. Elizabeth Bathory, whose backstory they get confused with Madame LaLaurie. Oh, man. <laughs> like, there's so much stuff that's just wrong in this movie. Oh. The fact that I found out that this is it was a real person yeah. just blew my mind. I'm like, why are you doing this? That lived 500 years ago, uh-huh. not 200 years ago. Could you imagine? Like, let's say just hypothetically, mm-hmm. she comes back from the dead for 24 hours. Mm-hmm. And you're like, you're never going to fucking believe this. <laughs> they made a movie about you where you're the killer. It's a video game. And she's going to like what are you talking about what's a movie what's a video game why is this police officer black we don't allow that like that's what she would say and your two gets of this movie first of all are wendell pierce who barely does anything love him and frankie muniz that's your gets that's who you put above the title on the poster and this is frankie muniz like at the peak of his malcolm in the middle fame right Right. this is right after malcolm yeah yeah it was chilling to see the career jimmy simpson might have had oh my god he was if this was gonna be like his trajectory for oh, a minute was the quippy friend it's like, sufferable oh, insufferable of this fucking movie yeah but this was one of the last three films that hollywood pictures released they were dormant for five years uh-huh. after releasing movies and then they put out three movies in 2006 this was one of them and then they closed up shop promptly afterwards i get it <laughs> yeah speaking of you know checking in at the 30 minute mark i have to throw this up front oh my beautiful fiance uh-huh. who often watches films with me for the podcast she tapped out no you know she actually referenced our podcast this podcast in her proposal to me so like <laughs> oh my god <laughs> live with that dustin but oh my she, lord i had accidentally hit a button on the roku remote that popped up the timestamp. oh no and we were 30 minutes into the movie and she goes there's 45 fucking minutes left <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that you say that because it also means like oh we're almost halfway through and we're only 30 minutes <laughs> i know <laughs> Yeah, this is a bad episode of Outer Limits. I tried really hard not to look at my phone <laughs> while watching this. It's so tough. It's impossible. It's really bad. You won't last five minutes watching this movie. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I dare you to put your phone down and not touch it for five minutes. I stared at Microsoft Word just blank watching the movie. I was like, I don't, what do I do here? Like, I'd rather watch the blinking mouse cursor, you know, yep. when you haven't typed anything. Yeah. I'd rather watch that than this movie. I was taking notes on my phone and and then I actually re-downloaded Candy Crush during this movie. <laughs> I was movie. just about to fucking say. <laughs> Not even a joke. I was just about to say you opened Candy Crush, didn't you? <laughs> Okay, so, yeah, Stay Alive. I would not be surprised if people hadn't heard of this movie, much like you, Brian. Like, 
it was kind of like a hey, we put it out there it had its flash in the pan mm-hmm. because this was 2006 and people were interested in this kind of concept and then it just fucking faded away yeah like it is hard to find base i'm surprised amazon of all people carried this i expected Tubi to pick this shit up it feels like a Tubi watch right it's is totally a Tubi movie it is definitely up Tubi's alley but if you haven't heard about this movie let me reel it back in a little bit and give you some information about <laughs> as i've been calling it around the house 2006 is stay alive <laughs> So as I mentioned, the year is 2006. The director is William Brent Bell, who has directed a couple of things that you may have heard of. Yeah. He did both of the the boy movies uh-huh. and two movies I actually liked. He did Orphan First Kill, which is a bonkers fucking movie, but a, an amazing time. Uh-huh. And uh, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but he also did a werewolf movie called Where. Oh, no, no I didn't see that one. Which um, about two years ago, I was just really on a werewolf kick. I was like, I'm going to watch all the werewolf movies I've never seen before. And Where fucking ribs. Okay. It's kind of, and this is going to be blasphemy almost to say, it's kind of anatomy of a fall adjacent but about werewolves oh okay oh my gosh it fucking rips i'm into that and i guess this was like him like getting his footing in the industry is like oh yeah you really stumbled with stay alive well we'll give you some more chances and then yeah now he's got a fairly successful career i actually almost put one of his other movies on the schedule this season oh is it one of the boys no his his second movie the devil inside oh which my god that one. does not have an ending that one's so bad i was gonna say we can't do two movies that don't have endings this season we already <laughs> we already did don't worry darling we can't do another one. right right oh, no i'm only doing no ending movies next season it's it's the devil inside <laughs> money python spiral from the book of saw all right well this movie stars john travolta julia (laughs) wait a minute that's not right wrong one john foster samir armstrong frankie muniz jimmy simpson milo vinton uh uh, (laughs) sophia bush and adam goldberg peter petrelli that's who it is yes yes yes. rocky's son put some respect on his name rocky's son the guy from (laughs) this is us that got killed by a toaster or whatever i didn't watch the show (laughs) got killed by a toaster i I didn't watch the show i know him from heroes that's it that's the only thing i know him from the budget was seven million dollars about six billion dollars too much for me and uh it grossed 27 million dollars worldwide so technically made some money technically huge hit a huge hit so <laughs> successful it's surprised hollywood pictures closed down after this but uh it currently has which you know oftentimes we don't necessarily agree with the rotten tomato score but it, i think i can fairly say this one's pretty accurate currently has a 10 percent on Ooh. rotten tomatoes <laughs> I could buy that one. Yeah. Ugh. There's a wild bit of trivia on IMDb. Uh-oh. We've talked a lot this season about how IMDb trivia is <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> yes. But one of the funniest bits I've ever seen was it said, so John Foster is Ben Foster's brother. Right. An actor I quite like. I know what you're going to say, by the way, but keep going. <laughs> yeah. The, the trivia says Ben Foster was cast in the lead role and mm-hmm. then decided to give the part to his brother. And I was like, that's not how anything works. That's not how that works. <laughs> that's not how <laughs> acting works. That's not how that works. Like, you know, I'm like, you know, what i don't like this one here i think my brother needs a win right you know and also if that were the case ben foster doesn't have that kind of pull in hollywood i would right. say maybe if like ben affleck signed on to something he's like i don't know casey take this one maybe yeah, sean penn decides <laughs> that chris should be in walter mitty instead yes, like, <laughs> maybe that works but i don't know I, that's not how that works you gotta figure like this is like ben foster right after doing like that third x-men movie uh-huh. right before 30 days of night yeah so it's before 30 days before like 310 to you Yuma. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, like, he was just known as playing Angel yeah. at this point. A bunch of TV movies and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's like, well, you know what? Got, I did the whole Angel movie. Yeah. <laughs> so, now, my brother needs a win here, you know? My brother needs to spread his wings. He needs to spread his <laughs> wings. And, you know, I can't get him in the mutant movies. And, you know, the proof is in the pudding. He does not. Because this guy... Blank cardboard. Holy shit. Yeah. Jesus. I've never seen negative charisma on an actor. And, you know, maybe he's done some shit since then, but this was my only introduction to this guy. I don't think I've ever seen him in anything else. And just, no, thank you. I I don't want to buy into the, I don't want to buy into uh, Lil Foster. What what I love about his character is just like, you can clearly tell they were just like, we need a hot guy to play a nerdy gamer. Right. You know, because that totally exists in real life. Right. But (laughs) he screams. 2006 though like even his like i know we're we're jumping into the movie a little bit early but like what is his job office office job thank you yeah his (laughs) office job is to be the best friend to adam goldberg and (laughs) give him he literally was just i was like dude you play silent hill yeah i play silent hill i guess we're buddies now i'm gonna give you a job that pays you 
fifty thousand dollars a year. What do you have to do? <laughs> Just tell me how to beat Silent Hill. Hey, hey, listen, man. It's a great gig if you could get it. Yeah. I'm not shaming the guy at all for his career choice because if you can get paid to just talk video games, I'm just saying <laughs> that Marino report never getting done, <laughs> never getting done. You notice how bad John Foster is when he's in scenes with Adam Goldberg, who is making choices left and right. Yeah. They're not oh, all man. good choices, but holy shit, the man came to play. He's making choices, and then the movie's making choices for him yeah. because <laughs> in the director's cut, he is a huge huge cokehead oh. and in the theatrical cut he's a smoker that okay. makes a lot of sense like the same scenes like when they first are playing the video game and it's like oh hey miller are you on and it cuts to his office uh-huh. in the theatrical version he's just coughing and you're like oh he just you know took a you know drag of a cigarette or whatever right now in the director's cut huge rail right there <laughs> and he's so, cheating on his wife with video games oh my god uh. I, I, well, we'll talk about adam goldberg in a minute but <laughs> i'm gonna play the trailer here oh, and sure. uh, i do have a drink of the film if you can believe it it's called cyanide and it's so you can kill yourself so you don't have to endure this movie <laughs> but uh all right let's let's watch the trailer i how many white flashes we're gonna like, say nathan oh, what do you think uh conservatively 89 <laughs> I, i'll take the over under on that i'm gonna go with 20 20 20, 20. All, right, all right i'm gonna go one dollar we'll, we'll see what happens <laughs> oh, there you go uh, one within the first second holy shit <laughs> game, man. yeah seriously so the, these are stolen House of the Dead assets, right? Yes. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, that's what I, I totally got House of the Dead vibes from this movie. Yeah. The game stuff, at least. Oh. Stay alive? Never heard of it. Yeah, this could be nice. Sweet Sebastian Bach, I want to play. Miller, you signed in yet? I'm here. All right, let's boot it up. Let's boot it up, Buttercup. <laughs> One in four is addicted to video games. <sighs> Jesus Christ. I love that their gaming room occasionally has giallo lighting. Like, there's <laughs> there's one part of the movie where I have no clue where they are. <laughs> but what happens? Oh, what's that? What's that? When the game beats you. <laughs> <laughs> she got me. Some, some, some woman, man. Some, some, some woman. <laughs> that gamer's worst enemy. They just say that shit. Oh my god, it's a cleaning lady. You know, you start seeing stuff. Hello. Oh boy. Miller died the same way he died in the game. This can't just be a coincidence. Also, the monster, the Liz Bathory monster, is clearly modeled after Alice Creed, yep. a character who doesn't appear in the theatrical cut. Yep. <laughs> so wild to me. Alice Krieg is basically the archetype for all creepy female monsters. Yep. Absolutely. Anybody out there? And uh, she does go full nude in the director's cut. So there you go. Is that true? Yep. I don't remember that. If you're into that sort of thing, good for you. Yeah. <laughs> when she's uh, <laughs> about to kill Abigail, I mean, it's dark. You can. I, I don't fault you for not seeing it. Sure. But there you go. I mean, I haven't seen the director's cut in 10 years. Yeah. But I feel like I'd remember seeing Full Frontal Borg Queen. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, again, you can't see a fucking thing in this movie, so. Fair yeah. Stay alive. That You know where all the money went? Paying for that title graphic. Yeah. <laughs> title, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, can you stay alive.com? What do you think? You think it's still up? You think it's still up and running? Let's find out. Yeah, I was going to say, can you check? Can you stay alive.com? Absolutely. It's going to be porn. I bet it's a right wing website. Now. <laughs> Holy oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> Redirects to Disney.com. <gasps> Holy shit. It gets still up. <laughs> Elizabeth Bathory's in the Disney vault. I'm telling you, she's a Disney princess. Oh, my God. Here's the true test. Can we search stay alive on here? Okay, mm. I get Avatar the Way of Water. No, they've written it off. Oh. Amazing. You know, David says, I'll come over to Disney, delete this movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, my first note, Nathan, mm. a stay alive production. What are you talking about? That is the mark of quality right there. <laughs> yeah. When your production company is called the name of your movie, you just know like, it isn't going to be good. <laughs> I wish we got four different versions of it, like Wiseau films. <laughs> That's like with Trolls 2 being the Magic Stone production. I just like, <laughs> yeah. what does this mean? Does this mean they created a shell company no. to make this movie? No, and it, it? it's a common practice with film productions, mm. especially ones that aren't necessarily like 
good housed by oh. a studio from the get-go <laughs> uh-huh. where they will for tax purposes create a secondary company like an llc or something like that mm-hmm. so that they can in essence get things like insurance oh. and all sorts of things and and just be able to file their taxes separately when the film's done mm-hmm. so it is common practice but to call it the name of the movie <laughs> yeah it's jarring <laughs> and it's really weird that it's again this is like a hollywood pictures film right. so it's fronted by disney yeah. <laughs> so like the fact that they forced this production to do this just tells me like uh you really didn't want to make this did you no i took it as oh we're using this to launder money and no. we gotta come up with a name i don't know and no. then like it was a placeholder and they're like well, well surely we'll call it something other than a stay alive production right yeah what if that became the new alan smithy and they just <laughs> used that at the beginning like trolls 2 is a stay alive production oh like- my god and i guess we should say the big thing about this movie mm. honestly was the tagline like i think they wrote the movie based on the tagline which is it's kind of become a meme it's almost a meme you're right yeah. like you die in the game you die for real yeah. like i think that's how they sold the movie like right. they didn't have a script and then i think what they did is they kind of did what saw 2 did we're like we need a saw sequel just grab something off the shelf slap the name saw on it we're good and they yep. did that with this this other movie they had about this plantation owner that comes back to life mm. and is trying to stay young by murdering young women and bathing in her blood and stuff like i don't know video game movie it's also yeah it's it's a shortcut to it's basically the tagline version of an earworm right it's like when darkness falls came out all the ads were stay in the light you stay alive like that darkness falls i was excited for this movie when it came out and i remember just like hearing it kind of just disappear immediately yeah i think there's also something to like the time period this came out oh, so yeah. like, this is at a time when i remember people complaining about how people are addicted to video games mm-hmm. and, you know playstation 2 had come out and so it was blowing up and on top of that there was a trend in hollywood to kind of make horror films around technology yep. yeah like you had the ring yep which is a vhs tape that can kill you yeah. oh this movie definitely saw the ring oh yeah 100 <laughs> percent. yeah like i just think hollywood executives in a boardroom say I just watched 2020 Mm -hmm. and it was a whole expose about how these kids are addicted to video games and like it's rotting their brains. Mm -hmm. What if we make a movie about that? Yes. I could see that. This is right after GTA San Andreas and the hot Hot coffee coffee, mod and Mm -hmm. all that stuff. Like, so it was very much in the zeitgeist. Yeah. And instead of, you know, making any cogent points, they're like, what if we threw a ghost in this and never explained it? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And we still do this where, like, we blame video games for anything that violent. I I cannot believe it's still happening 20 years later. But, like, why does no one use this as the example? It's always Grand Theft Auto and all these other games. I'm like, why does no one go, you know, stay alive? (laughs) This is really why our kids are violent nowadays. The lament configuration of video games. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Yeah, basically. It is. This game looks fucking terrible. Like, I mean, I know it's 2006 and all this shit's pre-rendered and whatever. But, like, I just wrote down, I was like, Mom, can I have Resident Evil 7? No, we have Resident Evil 7 at home. And it's this fucking. (laughs) I mean, the movie tries to give itself some legitimacy up top Uh because we have Milo Ventimiglia say, this is the scariest shit since (laughs) Clock Tower. And I'm like, no, it's fucking not. Oh, no. He specifically says Fatal Frame. Oh, Fatal Frame. That's what it was. Yes. The way they drop real things in this movie to try and give it some legitimacy. you get the hyper blaster? I fucking hated that. I hated that. And also, I did not realize Silent Hill 4 truly had a gun called the hyper blaster. That seems... I had to Google it. I did too. Yeah, you have to unlock it. It's in one of the alternate endings. That seems more like a Resident Evil thing. Yeah. I'll be honest with you guys. Like, I was done with video games mm. right when this movie came out. Like, I, I, w- I was not a big gamer. <laughs> this movie did it for you? No, 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 no. <laughs> like, I just, I've, n- I personally stopped really playing video games, uh-huh. like, right after high school, like, cause I got deep into filmmaking. So, like, I spent most of my time doing that. Yeah. Sure. So, like, I was not a gamer. Mm-hmm. My brothers are gamers still. Mm. But like, I was like, eh, yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. And I, like, I played, you know, PlayStation 1 games, but never really got into deep into PlayStation 2 or 3. So gotcha. like, when he's bringing up references to games, I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> Clock Tower, scary. Well, it was still, I feel like even still in 2006, like, unless you were talking about like the big named games like Grand Theft Auto and stuff, it was mm-hmm. still kind of a niche thing. Totally. Like, yeah, the PlayStation 2 came out and it was big, but like the PlayStation 1, I don't think sold nearly as well as the PlayStation 2 did and then so on. Mm. But like, yeah, like the fact that this was a very niche thing at this time of like, let's drop all these references in. We might as well be talking about Chrono Cross. I was like, going to say, you know, like, <laughs> you're not broad enough, right. I don't think, for people. Like, they don't really, 
Okay, here's a huge question I have since we're on this topic. Okay. How does this game fucking work? Because <laughs> is it, it changes perspective multiple times. I'm not even talking about the gameplay. I'm talking about the game yeah. because when they finally play it, somehow they have taken this one disc mm-hmm. and not only have they put it on what I would think would be five different consoles because right. they all have their own controllers, yes. their own TVs, but then Miller is able to play it in his office building <laughs> online. They only have one disc. How the fuck does this work? We see them all like show up with their rigs, but then in the reverse shots, it sure looks like they're all watching one television yeah. screen. One TV. One giant TV. Because <laughs> October's like, what's that over there? Yeah. Po- first of all, her fucking name's October. <laughs> oh, I got I got thoughts on all of these characters. October being one of them. The names in this movie. Oh my god. <laughs> swink. Swink. What is what is that? <laughs> what's a swink? But anyways, like I, I just didn't understand, like they misunderstood the core concept of the thing is like oh we have this one game yeah. it is an underground game this guy's beta testing it and then they all have copies of it for seemingly listen i'm gonna tell you right now that right there proves to me that this movie was made by old fuckers yes yep like any person even if you tangentially do any game at all Mm -hmm. you would know there is no fucking way that the technology works that way nope they have one disc yep that's it just one disc (laughs) and somehow yeah how how the hell is is adam goldberg able to even get in on this i don't know like he'd have to have downloaded (laughs) that game right onto his computer when did like playstation online start like the playstation because as we know it now it was like ps3 era yeah that's what i'm thinking yeah we're still in the era of LAN parties when this movie comes out. 2013, by the way, yeah. PlayStation Network started. The only thing I can guess is just that this was like a purely online experience right. type thing where you load the software. So like maybe there was a scene mm-hmm. that was on the cutting room floor. Which they each take the disc. Or maybe, you know, Hutch kind of sends Adam Goldberg a link to download the game. Mm-hmm. But my guess is that scene doesn't exist because this was a movie written by old fuckers yeah. who don't know how technology works. Could you also imagine trying to play a 2006 game online with like your cable internet connection? No. You would not be able to. It'd be physically impossible. Yeah. He'd have to sell his Steam Boy poster in oh order my to God. get enough Did- money to pay for that yes he would the whole wall is a steam boy poster it's incredible <laughs> i wrote that down the whole wall is steam boy <laughs> there's this thing it's called set design yeah. and art direction and uh clearly they don't got it yeah. and i don't know if you guys noticed this but it's it's a banner for the dvd release mm-hmm. of steam boy it's i know even like a theatrical poster i noticed but also like later on in the movie frankie munez is able to play this game on his laptop mm. which 2006 no fucking way no no, no fucking way not possible no nope. not possible just even the, the way the controller would work it would be impossible but we start in the game yeah which it's kind of hard to even tell because it looks almost as good as the rest of the movie does <laughs> ashley goes wait was that meant to be a real set or are we in the game already <laughs> don't you see the blocky characters we're in the game we're in the game <laughs> And then uh, Milo dies in the game. Mm. His character, by the way, insufferable name. His name is Loomis. Loomis Crowley. Yeah, ah. Loomis Crowley. We got to stop with the naming characters Loomis. We got to stop it. Yeah. We can't do it no more. Halloween did it. That's enough. But how am I supposed to get my Halloween reference in a movie? Right, right now. If I don't name them after my favorite characters. <laughs> how do I know that Michael Kennedy has watched other slasher films? <laughs> <laughs> Loomis Crowley. Well, that's that's not a name. No. Uh, that's not a name. It's two last names. It is two last He's the reverse Ricky Bobby. Yes. can't fucking do that. <laughs> but uh, he dies in the game. After watching his friend fucking his girlfriend with a pig mask oh. on. What the fuck was up with that? <laughs> so this was, what the fuck? This is two years after Saw comes out, and that's the only thing I can say is maybe that's what they're referencing. Uh-huh. Okay, first of all, no one has lights on in this house, no. in this giant fucking house. I don't understand. Is this his house or are they just like staying over because he says don't ruin my parents sheets <laughs> right to the couple having sex up in their in, up in the room but like yeah. he walks in and then in the unrated version there's man ass you oh, see yeah, this guy in a pig mask i don't get it he literally says a line so what's up and i'm like dude you're balls deep in this lady right now what are you talking about <laughs> i just i saw it when i was watching like i was watching the movie and i'm just like whoa what the fuck yeah. like I, to change direction to just like this man is is again as you say he's balls deep in his woman Ugh. and he's got a pig fucking mask on. I'm like, mm-hmm. and what kinky shit is that appropriate? Like, I, I don't get it. 
I don't get it. This is when I texted uh, Dustin and Mally that I was five minutes into the movie and already found Mally's prop cop <laughs> because that pig mask has him written all over it. It's got fuck pig written on it. It does. Oh. It does. I, I'm just like, what the fuck? Why? We also get our first instance of how none of the dialogue feels like it's connected yeah. because Hutch calls Loomis and the phone call starts and Hutch goes, how was it? Yeah. And Loomis says, I just played this new game called Stay Alive. And I was like, what were you asking? About. <laughs> How was seeing your roommate <laughs> fuck that yeah, girl with a pig mask? <laughs> oh, you know, there's some things you just don't ever unsee, and that's one of them. Yeah, he's like, Stay Alive is the scariest fucking game I've ever played in my life. <laughs> I also have to mention this because this is a wild bit of trivia, uh-huh. but uh, Milo V here also was in the movie Gamer, oh. uh, which, uh, you know, the guys who made Crank made. Absolutely. And plays a character whose name is Rick. <laughs> so there you go. Do with that information with what you will. The sooner we hand the MCU over to Neville Dean Taylor. (laughs) (laughs) The sooner we can get things back on track. Absolutely. (laughs) I think I saw Gamer in the theater, too, if I'm not mistaken. I love that fucking movie. It's It's so so wild. I love it. It's so wild. I love it. I also don't mind this rumble pack motif. Uh, Like the the, the vibration. Like, I kind of dig that. It's like someone's cell phone is, like, connected to your brain. Yeah. (laughs) rumbling whenever you get a text because it is so loud yeah and then he died in the video game and then we find out his roommates were playing earlier and they died and that's why they went upstairs to to get it on and then like he goes up in the room where they just were and it's i guess pinhead and his crew just showed up because this room in the unrated version holy shit it's just blood and spines and everything just ripped apart the walls are bathed in blood it's it's a gruesome fucking scene in the theatrical cut it is a half a split second yep split second straight up can't even tell what you're looking at it's so wild they do that a couple of times what gets me though is like why would Disney be okay <laughs> with them making the full R-rated version of this thing I right? Know. if they know that they're going to cut the fucking thing down? Right. This is such a hatchet job. Like I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> because just from a purely financial perspective, uh-huh. if I'm Disney and I'm like, hey. And I hope you will be one day. I don't really want to make this stupid ass fucking slasher movie. Yeah. But yeah, you go ahead and you spend more time making effects <laughs> and blood and right. gore and paying for more vitamin B. 12 to crush up so Adam Goldberg can look like he's snorting blow. <laughs> you know, do all that, but I'm never going to show any of it. Right. Go yeah. hire Alice Krieg. Go hire this other person to play like the creator of the game. Like, go do all this, but I'm going to cut it all anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I, I don't get that. <laughs> Could you imagine defrosting Walt Disney and be like, hey, man, it's 2006. <laughs> we got this great movie that's just coming out. We're really excited about. And you show him the opening scene of this movie. He'd be like, pull me back in. What the <laughs> fuck are you doing? Well, I mean, if you defrost Walt Disney, you're also going to get like all the anti-Semitism and all that sure, stuff that sure. goes with him. Oh, yeah. He sees Wendell <laughs> Pierce and Adam Goldberg. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. When did I say they could be in the movie? This is produced by someone named Mick G. <laughs> it was very explicit <laughs> in how I felt about this. Stuff. Jesus. But yeah, so our our guy here, Milo, he fucking dies. Mm. He gets hung from the rafters. Poor Loomis. Poor Loomis. Yeah, he dies from the rafters. We hardly <laughs> knew you. Just like you did in the video game. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then we get our, our stay alive card. Yeah. And then we get introduced to our main character who just, again, just starting with the bad names, his character's name is Hutch. Hutch. And, uh, the gamer. I feel like they really wanted like Ashton Kutcher for this role yes. or something. Like, because this movie feels very butterfly effecty. Yeah. This movie is one tree hill coded yeah. that is why <laughs> yep. people who look like john foster and yep. are in the lead <laughs> yep absolutely i was gonna go oc but sure. yeah, oh, yeah. Well, right. you'd be right with that because uh the girl who plays abigail was in the oc yeah. that's right, right. samara yeah. armstrong absolutely who is doing a baby voice I, in this movie I, did i imagine that no i got no, problems you're right. i was i was trying to think of a polite way to say uh is no nope, she's doing a baby voice she's doing a baby voice she's not good in this movie and it's very who what's the word um annoying empty brain yes i think i'm having to create a, a name for her. well i know this is jumping ahead but like just her character serves no purpose no Oh my god! Well, the reveal of her character with the the big lie she tells, yes, maybe one of the funniest fucking things I've ever seen in a slasher <laughs> movie. Yeah, holy shit! But uh, 
<laughs> oh my god and also yeah nathan I, I mean you weren't around for this era but we've actually seen uh john foster in a previous episode of ours oh i don't think this would be worthy of a game because i highly doubt you would guess this okay. but he is in terminator 3 okay no shit. sure he is the gas station attendant that arnold does the talk to the hand bit oh Man. shit yeah i didn't know that yeah the only way i knew that is i looked up his filmography because i was curious what i'd seen him in that would have been my bit part if i had been <laughs> on that episode uh, but yeah, so we get introduced to Hutch, who works at Office yeah. and does <laughs> Office job. And he's hip to this PDA sex thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So he, his whole thing is he works at this firm or whatever they do, but he doesn't really seem to have a job yeah. other than helping out his boss, played by Adam Goldberg. who He's just trying to get the Dick Ricker account or whatever, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> it's the Moreno report, man. <laughs> yeah. It's the Moreno. You got to get that Moreno report done, man. He's just like, I don't care that you can't do your job. I need you to help me with the fucking Silent Hill 4. I, the walkthrough I tried online doesn't help. I'm Which, like, by well, the dude, way, Dustin, do you know what the subtitle for Silent Hill 4 is? Oh, I did not. What was it? The Room. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense because that is what that game is called. But God, I I love Adam Goldberg, and man, I don't know what the fuck he is doing in this movie. Absolutely not. And I think he's uncredited, isn't he? Like, no, he's, he's there. Oh, okay, he's credited. But I'm just the minute he popped, in, I'm like fucking Hebrew hammer in this yeah. movie, <laughs> Mister Numbers. What are you doing, Mister Numbers? <laughs> I mean, he's great in Fargo. He should have just been like Shabbat Shalom, motherfucker, when <laughs> one of those monsters got him. Yes. <laughs> I had just watched Days of Confused for the first time like a month ago. Oh, and wow. I see, I'm watching this movie. And I'm like, oh my God, Adam Goldberg, what, how lowly you have fallen. Like, what is going on? Yeah. And I love him in Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. I liked him in Days of Confused a lot. And again, I loved him in Fargo. And I'm like, the choices you make, man. He needed money. Oh, I'm sure. I think he's always good. No, he uh, is truly. always good. I think he's always good, yeah. <laughs> regardless of the project. I think he probably did this whole thing in one day. Yeah. And he was clearly separated from the rest of the cast, which is maybe the Saving Grace. This might have been an easy fucking paycheck for him. I hope yeah. so. Yeah. I hope you got your bag, Adam Goldberg. I do not fault you for this movie, but it, it was eye-opening to see you on screen because I had forgotten you were in this movie. <laughs> so. But yeah, this was my first of many notes where at this point I was like, I can forgive the opening scene because part of it's in the video game, mm -hmm. part of it's at night. But now we're in daylight. We're in an office. There's fluorescent lighting at the very least. And I'm like, even for 2006, this movie looks like shit. I it can't does. fucking see anything. Man, every scene in this movie was dark as all fuck. Yes. Yeah. Like you couldn't see anything. Yeah. And like I had like I was watching it on my computer. Mm -hmm. So like because I was watching on daily motion because again I'm not paying for this fucking thing. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, wonder if I move it to like my color calibrated monitor mm -hmm. if it looks any better. It wasn't. No. <laughs> it still was dark as shit. I couldn't tell what the fuck was happening half the time. Yeah, it's so desaturated yet deeply contrasted. Yeah. Like even the frame rate, like it seems like it was filmed directly for YouTube. Yes. Like it just <laughs> it's not a natural frame rate. And as yeah. someone who looks at frame rates all fucking day, I'm like, I don't know, this could be like 17. Yeah. No, this looks like a college humor video. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I don't know. I, I watched the Amazon stream on like a 55 inch TV, I think. Yeah. Yeah. as my bedroom TV and I'm like I still can't fucking see anything that's going on yeah. by the way I gotta get this off my chest this movie this was more expensive than most Amazon rentals that I've done mm -hmm. dude when I saw the total price my jaw dropped I had to send you a screenshot of it it was four dollars and seventy cents to rent this and I don't know why that was my breaking point for the season I know I know I was like I'm glad we're putting this towards the back gate because if we started the season with stay alive I don't know if I'd want to continue mm. but anyways <laughs> Samara Armstrong, oh. who we talked about, gets introduced here because they go to the funeral. <laughs> I hate her so much in this movie. <laughs> She's taking photos at someone else's funeral. I know. Who the fuck does that? <laughs> who the fuck is like, I need to get pictures of your suffering <laughs> and your tears because I'm artsy. Look at me. <laughs> well, they're perfect for each other because Hutch is the only asshole wearing color to this funeral. Yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. He's at this funeral. He senses he gets his picture taken and he just goes, did you take a picture? picture of me and she's ha, yeah <laughs> there's so many crying faces at this funeral and you seem to be the saddest but you weren't crying she says and then she lets him believe that she knew him yeah. and like that's why she's at the funeral she's like yeah totally Who's this again? <laughs> so fucking weird. And also, this girl, I don't know if you knew Nathan, but she plays 
<laughs> yeah, she's in the OC, but she's also one of the two conjoined twins in Not Another Teen Movie. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> oh, amazing. I thought you were going to say something about the girl who plays Loomis's sister. Oh, my God. Who, oh, my God. <laughs> my, my fiance asked if it was her make a wish to be in this movie. <laughs> Boy, oh my god, what a what a role this little girl has got. Just like, oh, you, you know how you bring stuff to the funeral to give to friends? Yeah, you bring his video game collection to the funeral. Here's all your shit uh. in this Mary Poppins bag that has so much shit in it. She's got a bag of holding. She plays her own games. They're just they're not on videos. You know what I mean? Oh. And Jimmy Simpson, we get interested to him and his sister uh, Sophia Bush. Got Sophia Bush. God damn, like. He is God, I love him. Me too. He's too good for this shit. He is. He's so good and it's always sunny. He's so good on House of Cards. He's so good in everything he does. This but- was like right at the beginning of his career. Because yeah. he's doing he did loser. He'd done Herbie fully loaded. Yep. Always sunny. And then a year after this, he's in Zodiac. Yeah. And then it, everything changes. Yeah. And Look, I don't blame him because he is doing the job that he has been hired to do. Sure. Everybody needs money. Yeah. You know, it's 2006. We are steeped in douchebag culture. Yep. Right. This is what you're supposed to play. Play a douchebag. And he- hey, uh, TJ Miller hasn't been invented yet. Correct. I know. <laughs> there you, you go. <laughs> yeah, God, this is the proto TJ Miller. Holy shit. But man, like when they go to the apartment and he has to lick the video game controller. Jesus before, Christ. I'm like, hey, uh, we're not friends anymore. Just so you know, <laughs> I, I'm leaving. Bye. Also, was it? Sophia Bush who hugs Hutch and says, man, first your parents die and now this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I think you're right. Dude. Again, like they gave these actors words, God, but they did not exactly like say like how to say the words. Some of the funniest exposition I've ever heard. Dude, she has got a line later on in the movie. I don't want to bring up yet because I know what it is. I know you know what it is. It is the funniest fucking line I've ever heard in a movie. And dude, she gives it such pizzazz. She tries so hard to make it real. But we'll save it until we get there. Oh, man. But speaking of lines, <laughs> I think it's her right here that she's talking about Milo V. She goes, so he was a real gamer, huh? And I'm like, oh, what the God fuck damn. does that mean? I forgot about that. <laughs> like he plays games. Yeah. <laughs> so that ma- that makes that's a gamer, right? Like, <laughs> that's it. Is that it? Oh, OK. Do you see what I mean? That it just sounds like a slur. Yeah. Like, it just sounds insulting. Like he was a real gamer. Huh? <laughs> well, her whole weirdo relationship with Hutch is just kind of bizarre. Mm-hmm. Like at one point, you're just like, OK, so they're like buddies. And then like the way she like hugs him yeah. and like, you know, you're just like, you guys want to fuck, don't you? Would it blow your mind to know that they are boyfriend and girlfriend in this movie? No, they are not. Wait, really? <laughs> they are. Really? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I am pretty sure. Because he, he kisses Abigail. Abigail later. I know, but she calls him babe, and like I'm pretty sure that they're supposed to be boyfriend and girlfriend. So he's got the Casper Van Dien of choices here, <laughs> like in Starship. <laughs> I am pretty sure, oh. because when he walks into the, the cafe there, yeah. she hugs him, calls him babe, and she calls him babe later on too and i think it maybe is only in the director's cut where all of this is kind of revealed oh but well, there man, you go i mean i get it the guy washes his red solo cup oh my clean house. god <laughs> uh, oh he's got all of his balls drinks all up on like a shelf somewhere yeah you know i mean sophia bush may be the only normal person in this movie <laughs> maybe i mean there's probably a good chance she hangs out at graveyards. I mean, very good chance. <laughs> Which, hey, I mean, that's cool. Ugh. This was the period of time where we were slapping some some eyeliner on a teen star and, and saying calling they're goth. goth. They're goth now. Yep, like, yep. This was the era of Kristen Bell and Pulse. Yeah. <laughs> now, here's the funny thing is like at, in high school, I totally was a goth kid Same. Mm-hmm. and had a lot of friends who were legit goth girls. Hell sure. Yeah. <laughs> and I have yet to see any movie yeah. yeah any movie maybe blair witch 2 <laughs> being close yeah that has accurately portrayed real goth chicks my favorite instance of subway like some type of media trying to portray goss uh-huh. is actually in south park yeah. when one of the characters has a seosin poster in their bedroom i'm like you don't understand what goth is at all not at all oh no south park guys totally know <laughs> either they were goth kids like legit early goth in the 80s but sure like, sure i have yet to see that because yeah sophia bush her her name's October. Oh. Ha ha, get it? Oh. Like spooky. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like Halloween. It's fucking awful. And yeah, I just, I don't hate her as much as I hate Abigail. No. Nope. Like with a pure hatred of passion, hate Abigail in this because mm-hmm. she just, the whole taking pictures at a funeral. That's I know. nuts. It's fucking crazy. It's I just know. nuts. I know. The fact that she's just like, I just, I really am hot and I like to take pictures. 
and I never gained before. <laughs> But I'm lying to your face. Right. Like I also love when they're playing the video game and then they get to the 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 part where they have to read the prayer or whatever. Yeah. I think he's supposed to read it. I think he's supposed to read that. And then October goes <laughs> And then and she goes, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's, like I would not be surprised if Abigail was somehow in on the game. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Know? If she would have revealed oh man, you're making this movie so much better. She would have been like it was revealed that Elizabeth Bathory was like her great ancestor. Well, she could be like, "What's her face from Get Out?" Yeah, she just lures yes. people. Mm-hmm. You know? Okay, now this is this is a movie now. We're this making is a movie, a movie now. <laughs> Since this movie takes place in New Orleans, uh-huh. so she should at the thirty minute mark, the hour mark, or whatever, when the reveal happens, she suddenly slips into like a bayou accent. I was gonna say <laughs> this is a good point. This is at New Orleans. Nobody's got a fucking Cajun accent. No, Have you y'all been? done playing my video game. <laughs> we needed a harbinger of death to. to we needed. Um, oh my god. You become and snared in my gator claws. Oh my god, what's his name for Pet Cemetery? We needed him in this movie. Oh yeah, yeah. You needed Fred Gwynn. Yes, we needed him. He- Sometimes dead is better. <laughs> Y'all shouldn't be playing that video game now. <laughs> we needed that. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like you done downloaded some underground shit. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like you went to Ebal's world. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't seen anything this fucked up since my new grounds days. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I fucking hate this movie and I hate this era. <laughs> this ain't one of them flash games, are they? Oh my god. <laughs> oh god, this episode's gonna be so long. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry, listener. We're, we're powering our way through it. Okay, so this was the first time I wrote down that this the blocking in this movie is awful. Yeah. And there's at one point where they're talking about, oh, you know, Milo played the game and he died for real. Adam Goldberg died and he he died for real in the same way. Yeah. And like Abigail's got her back to the camera. And yes. She goes, well, I don't know much about gaming. I'm like, I can't fucking see you. What are you talking about? It's like, shut up. So this is after the interrogation and Finn is in what, the fucking danger room. Like <laughs> Jimmy Simpson is sitting in like Gabriel's apartment from Malignant. Oh it's my the, God. I, yes. Where the fuck are they? Is it, is this Abigail's dark room? No, because we find out later she's homeless. Dude, so like, Oh my God. The homeless reveal. That's uh, what I'm talking about. We got to save it till we get there. I but know. like, I know, I know. That room you're talking about is so crazy because they have like several computers, like pre built. The cafe slash gaming yes. room yeah. has red light everywhere. Yes. They have computer rigs that are just like mounted up on the ceiling. I'm like, what are you doing? I again, I go back to this. The people who wrote this movie <laughs> have no idea how real gaming works. You're right. Or, you're right. or real human beings. Because <laughs> there's no place that has ever existed that looks or has clientele <laughs> like this right. yeah. ever. I wrote down like it cuts to Jimmy Simpson and Sophia Bush in full red lighting and yes. I was like the bisexual energy uh-huh. here is off the charts <laughs> like I was so <laughs> I was like where the fuck am I? So let's talk about the scene when they first play the game. Yes. So first of all we get introduced to Frankie Muniz and I too. Frankie Muniz jump scare. I was gonna say I too would react <laughs> like this if Frankie Muniz popped up at my people with an upside down accounting visor. Oh my god. Jesus. That was the way the kids wore it back in 2006 <laughs> yeah. but man. they did it nobody fucking wore their hats like this nobody wore their hats like this. according to old fucking boomers God. yes this is how they did it and then everyone in this movie has to have a thing yes. like jimmy simpson has to wear his stupid hat his little hat with the the strings hanging down yeah yeah samir armstrong's got to take pictures at incredibly inappropriate times <laughs> and frankie Muniz also has to wear a stupid hat and like a a and wrist a hand guard? Brace. Yes, a hand brace. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and he has to be obsessed with all things tech mm-hmm. and talk in tech speak yep. that nobody understands. Tech speak and then also is like obsessed with new age philosophy. Yes. And like I, I couldn't make heads or tails of any of that. And was this in the theatrical version? I only watched the theatrical version. Okay. Does he perv on her taking a piss? No, no that's only in the unrated oh version. Oh my god! Yeah. Which uh, one's taking a piss? Was it October or or Abigail? Okay, so they all get to the apartment, okay. Hutch's apartment, and Abigail shows up, and they're like, oh yeah, this is Abigail, and everyone's like, who? Yeah, and like she goes, oh, I have to pee real quick. He goes, oh okay, and then he goes to the bathroom. Hang he goes, on. can you recap this slower? <laughs> 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 So he says, "This is the good part." She says, "I have to pee." He goes, "He says, go piss, girl." <laughs> of course, of course. And the camera just sits there for a minute after she exits camera frame, uh-huh. and he goes, 
oh, you know what? She doesn't have any toilet paper. I forgot to put some in there. Hold on. Oh, and then man. he goes and he knocks on the door and he goes, hey, I, there's no toilet paper in there. She goes, oh, can you just kind of like slide it through the door then? And he goes, yeah. And then he just opens the door yeah. <laughs> pretty wide. Yeah. And she's just sitting there on the toilet and he just goes, uh, it's just can you hand it to me? Like, what the <laughs> fuck did he think she was doing? That's what you do in the bathroom. You know, she announced that she was going to avoid something. <laughs> <laughs> He just talks to her with the door, but it's just like, what are you doing? Yeah. Well, let's be honest here. That might be the first time that, that Swink has seen another woman. That's right. true. Who isn't October. He's like, wait, other women exist? And there's no other, you know, woman that Swink has ever seen before, yeah. aside from October. Absolutely not. Well, other than these two and our villain, there are no other women in this movie, really. No, there are none. <laughs> so Knowing that she had to, like, rush to the restroom really changes Jimmy Simpson's line about that girl has got body karate going on. Body karate. What does that even fucking mean? You mean she had to go take a shit? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, that's what she had to do? That's what my body does when I have to take a shit. It <laughs> yeah, you know, if it's a really bad one, you might be, like, doing hi <laughs> You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, and speaking of uh, toilet Huber, yeah. Jimmy Simpson's tank top says who farted. Yeah. So there you go. Of course it does. Good stuff. I expect nothing less from Liam McPoyle. <laughs> <laughs> so you will answer her. <laughs> <laughs> so they play this game. And it's terrible. They have to recite this prayer passage thing. Sure. And he's like, oh, that's voice technology. That doesn't exist yet. That it doesn't exist. That's light years ahead of time in space. Which is not true. Seaman came out in like 1998. That's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> On the Dreamcast. Yeah. And then there's that Tom Clancy game that came out. Tom Clancy's Seaman. Yeah, Seaman. <laughs> well, I'm just saying like, is it really that much of a stretch? Like, right. I don't know. You've got microphones yeah. attached to headsets. Yeah. You clearly can talk into it. Hey, you Pika. You came yeah. out like seven years before this. Yeah. yeah. And then they play this game and it's it's so weird because at times it seems to be like a survival horror thing where like you got limited supplies, mm -hmm. you're not really supposed to fight back as so much as hide and everything. And then it it cuts like a jump cut and suddenly it's Goldeneye yep. and like they're just running around with dual P90s in their hand just blasting away little ghost girls in the cemetery. Yeah, that's the thing is we establish you can use roses to uh, get the ghosts to go away, but also you can use an AK-47. Yeah, <laughs> you can shoot them in the fucking face. That's so fucking stupid <laughs> ah, i have a rose just any rose right does it matter which type of rose it is because there are different variety of roses out there does it have to be the whole rose can you tear one petal off and yeah throw what it? Is, does that work because that's the thing is if you did have petals could you just hold on to one petal yeah and get a lot out of that rose yeah. in fact you can because that's what abigail does <laughs> later true, in the movie true, for some true. reason well later she just is like losing her shit yeah and doing he loves me. He loves me he not. Loves me not. <laughs> he loves me not. So, bitch, you should be dead. So. <laughs> I'm going to try and move things along because we've already been talking for like almost an hour now. So I'm sorry. It's my fault. No, no, no. It's all good. My fault. But Dustin, I do want to say, can we sample Abigail saying he loves me, he loves me not on our next record? <laughs> sure. Absolutely. <laughs> cool. So Adam Goldberg dies in the game. Yeah. Smash cut to his office. He gets killed off screen. By a Zoom. By a Zoom. <laughs> a snap Zoom kills him. And then we cut to Hut showing up the next day and there's police tape, yada, yada. And Wendell Pierce gets introduced who does fucking nothing in this movie. Maybe he does more in the director's cut that I didn't finish, but he, he reads a book later on that recaps the movie. Oh, That's all that God. happens, really. Uh, but his name is Detective Thibodeau, Thibodeau, which is a fucking great name because he's in New Orleans. That's yeah. a Louisiana <laughs> name, man. That's a Louisiana. But uh, Wendell Pierce from past episodes that we've talked about, The Gift and Sleepers, yeah, is uh, too good for this shit as well. Uh -huh. Like, I mean, this is right during the peak of The Wire and mm -hmm. everything. Like, uh. I don't know. Get your paycheck, King. No <laughs> fault to you as well, but Miller's dead, and then they all reconvene at the cafe, and Jimmy Simpson says, well, uh, you know, he was a gamer. He'd want us to game in his honor. I'm like, dude, he died today. Right. Yeah. He died like four hours ago. Can you not just hold off? Just wait? Yeah. And uh, he decides, oh, I'm going to play. You guys are too much of a pussy to fucking play. And everyone leaves. Here's the thing, man. I did hear from the trailer that one in four people are addicted to video games. That's true. So that true. Is, 
That is why. Yeah. You know, he might be addicted. He's one of those four. Absolutely. This is also where the movie starts to rapidly give us rules uh, in <laughs> offhanded ADR comments. Like, Dude. Oh. Jimmy Simpson reveals that, that Elizabeth Bathory doesn't like mirrors yep. in an ADR line. Yep. He's like, oh, I found a mirror in the game. She doesn't like mirrors. And the way that comes back, holy fucking shit. <laughs> but this is the scene where they kind of lay out what the movie is. Oh, you know, Milo and his roommates all died the same way they died in the game, mm-hmm. which I don't even know how Hutch would know that. He wasn't there. <laughs> right. Miller died the same way he died in the game. Well, because Hutch is able to Google their autopsies that evening. I know. Oh, <laughs> I got so many thoughts on that. Like, why was it so easy for him to just access restricted police material wild at a library an ongoing investigation by the way ongoing, yeah i'm gonna look at all the <laughs> stuff i got how'd you get it don't ask <laughs> Can I say something crazy? Mm. I think the acting may be better in Birdemic than it is here <laughs> oh, in this scene. That's a rough, that's a rough <laughs> comparison, man. Abigail's got her back to the camera and she's trying to explain things. Yeah. And then Frankie Muniz says something like, I think it's Abigail goes, you know, I'm no gamer, as she says multiple times. Uh-huh. And she's like, but maybe it's just coincidence they died the same way they died in the game. And Frankie Muniz says something like, actually, it's quite perfect the way they died. Uh-huh. And I'm like, what do you? What? What are you talking about? <laughs> he starts going off about perceptive reality and and, and it's no just, one acknowledges him, by the way. <laughs> just like, yeah, okay, swink, whatever. Did the movie sound like for the second half of the film, it sounds like most of the dialogue is one eighty yard. It's yeah. always like someone turned away from the camera. Yep. But then so much of it sounds like a hot mic. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like the dialogue was like blown out in multiple scenes. I noticed that too. So I noticed that. Especially, weird. Especially when they're at the uh the plantation. The crime scene? Well oh, yeah, yeah, well that too. But no, and Frankie Muniz, man, like nobody acknowledges him ever. I think he he kind of disappears from the movie in the later half. But like he also feels the need because again, this is right after Malcolm in the Middle to say bitch a lot. Right. Like, he's throwing <laughs> bitches out left and right to let you know this ain't your mama's Malcolm in the Middle. Sure. No, it's not. I don't know, man. It's. It's a real bad fucking time. This whole <laughs> movie is a bad time. And then there's this bad joke where they're like, oh my God, everyone that plays the game dies for real, just like the tagline of the poster. <laughs> and they run to the cafe and they think Jimmy Simpson's dead. And this is in the unrated version, mm. Ryan. I don't know if you saw this, but yeah. the joke where he's like, oh, he's not really dead. He just sits up and he's coughing, right? Uh-huh. In the director's cut, he rips a huge fucking bong rip right there. So I think in the theatrical version, they do show a Oh, little, they, show, they it? show it. They do. Oh, okay. But they don't like elaborate on it. Like, yeah. That's what they do a lot of times with these unrated versions is they'll just, they'll hang on a scene. Yep. Like, two or three seconds longer. Yep. Yeah. And I think that's what they did with that one. But he, yeah, he totally was ripping on the bomb. And then I think this is where they actually reveal Loomis's full name of Loomis Crowley. I think it is in that autopsy report or whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. And I just wrote down, get absolutely fucked movie. That was my <laughs> note on that. <laughs> Oh, Nathan, yeah, I wrote down in my notes. Did the audio peak for anyone else? Yeah. It was during the part where Hutch is explaining how everyone died in the game and yeah. his mic was clearly distorted. Yes. So <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's so weird. Well, when you record ADR in a bathroom, that right. happens, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Also weird, Jimmy Simpson immediately drives to Silent Hill. Oh, my yes. God. Okay, so I watched this movie on the couch, and Priscilla's sitting there, and she's on her phone or whatever, mm-hmm. and it does the smash cut to him singing in the car, yeah. where they're like, oh, apparently you don't even need to be playing the game. to die, cause None of the rules in this thing make fucking sense. No. Oh, yeah. No, They at one point, they're like, now she's cheating. Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> it's like Shang Tsung all over again. <laughs> yeah, because apparently, like, it doesn't matter anymore, yeah. like, right. because you recited the shit, you're already marked for death, so whether you play the game or not, you're fuck right it makes no sense yeah. it makes no sense she's now playing the game like we see characters keep leaving their fucking laptops open so that liz can hijack their game yeah. she just unpauses it for them right. which is so fucking funny to me but <laughs> it smash cuts to him singing in the car and i just hear priscilla next to me go <laughs> just the loudest fucking sigh that's what she goes you paid four dollars and 70 cents for this <laughs> she's like we have a wedding to plan what are you fucking doing see here's the thing my wife has given up on watching any of the movies that i have to review yeah yeah for my podcast that's yeah. fair so like she's just like yep you were you you watch whatever you need to watch but i'm not i'm not gonna watch it with you and i'm like that's cool that's cool and then he sees a jump scare uh-huh. and he like 
pulls his car over to the side of the road and then he just starts walking. Yeah. He doesn't crash. No. Right. They call him. He's like, where are you? He goes, oh, my whip got stuck out here. I'm like, what are you? What? You just parked it. Yeah. What are you talking about? You can just get in the car and drive. Exactly. Like, just do it. And then it's so funny because we don't cut back to the cafe, but then he hears Abigail. He goes, is that Abigail? What's up, mama? And I was like, okay, you got a, you got one laugh from me, Jimmy Simpson. It's a good joke. <laughs> it's a good bit. Uh, not a good bit. I have not tripped out like this since I ate that hot dog matzo ball at Bible camp. <laughs> That's just a word salad. Just a word fucking salad. Not every riff has to stay in the movie. No, no you don't have to let him improvise every line of the movie. Right. Just cut, cut it. Cut around it. Again, I hate to say this. Old people yeah. wrote this movie. Yeah. 100%. And they were just like, yeah, that seems funny. The kids say that stuff, right? <laughs> it's for the kids. I feel like our job know? is not so much to diagnose the movie so much as just try to understand understand it we're, there is we're, no understanding we're sociologists <laughs> in this fucking experiment ah uh, gotcha yes <laughs> and then man he gets run over by a fucking horse carrier <laughs> because she is cheating now it is hilariously awful yeah. like the effect of him getting run over it's filmed in like with like ghosting mm-hmm. like the the effect is it like it looks like something out of drive angry yeah. yeah a movie that is significantly more fun than this <laughs> i'm gonna make an editing note here because yeah. i don't know if people are gonna know but like when you're editing and you accidentally have things on like interlaced footage versus progressive and you get this weird ghosting effect that's mm-hmm. exactly what this looks like it's the combing the, the combing, combing is exactly, what you're talking exactly. about yeah and i'm also here <laughs> <laughs> and then like they show up at this crime scene and wendell pierce is there with his hot-headed partner detective king yeah detective king he and doesn't understand video games and shit man <laughs> <laughs> that's the executives who made the movie that's their mouthpiece for yes, this movie he's like right i don't fucking get this, this is maybe scary to you pussies but to me this shit's <laughs> stupid <laughs> the uh the, the unrated cut has like this extended sequence uh, like a time lapse sequence of csi arriving oh, and emergency right. services yeah. and oh wow i watched this at a bad movie night years ago with some friends and we sped up that scene and played yakety sax over it and it was <laughs> exquisite man we kind of get brief glimpses of Hutch's backstory, which is <laughs> fucking insane. Right. I want to save it, though, because there's a line that comes up later that I want. That's when we can talk about it. But uh. they show up at this crime scene in the middle of the road, and Frankie Muniz has brought his laptop with the game on it. Right. And the detective starts, he's like, uh, I think it has something to do with this game. And the detective starts playing it, and he gets put in a saw trap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fully. It's basically the reverse bear trap, but for his mouth. Yeah. Yes. And like, Hutch shuts the case. He's like, I don't want anyone else to get hurt. I'm like, like, then stop playing the fucking game. Stop it. Why did you bring your fucking laptop with you, you fucking moron? Break the disc. Throw it. I mean, did you not see a child's play? Throw it in the fucking fire. Yeah. Do whatever you got to do. Shoot it with a shotgun. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Throw a rose on it. <laughs> but hey, gamers got to play. Gamers got to play. <laughs> gamers got to play. That does sound like a slur. Right? Like, <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm fucking telling you. It's a now slur. Now that I've said it. <laughs> We all said it with such like <laughs> like resigned sadness. Piss and vinegar. Piss and vinegar when you say it. Game is kind of play. Okay, I know we talked about the best line of the movie. Uh-huh. It's right here where like they're trying to figure everything out and Sophia Bush says it and Nathan, do you, do, we should say it at the same time. Are you ready? I don't have it written down. Oh man, okay. Go for it. Okay. Someone ran my brother down in a horse-drawn carriage. <laughs> And I want to find them and hurt them or something like that. Oh, my God. (laughs) I think I was blank stared when that line came out. I was just like, oh, for fuck's sake. What makes it even is she she sells the shit out of it. She She really does. She truly does. And what makes it even funnier is they're sitting next to Finn's car. I know. Which means the cops and paramedics left them alone at the crime scene with the victim's car. And then I just wrote down, I was like, man, this line is this movie's version of he was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died. It's a wild line. It's also this movie's version of in Sharknado when Nova is just like, and that's why I really don't like sharks or whatever. Well, <laughs> there is a line like that that's coming up real soon uh-huh. that we got to talk about. But man, I had to rewind the movie. I was like, I got to hear her do this again. And Fuck, it's so good. Again, she is given like you are paid to say this line and she fucking sells it. But yeah. she does but the words she says are the funniest fucking thing god damn it that was so fucking funny it's a great line uh, it's a great line well that makes no sense like you you know who did 
this. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, it was Elizabeth Bathory. This is where I wrote down this movie. It's not someone, you know. <laughs> there is an improv game. Dustin, you probably know this one because they play it on Freedom every once in a while. Uh-huh. Where two characters improvise a scene <laughs> and one character just reads from another script yep. that they have in hand yeah. and everyone has to kind of work around each other. Yep. That's what this movie feels like. A hundred percent. And I would not fault you for not knowing that because again, everyone is just kind of mumbling their lines. No one's everyone just kind of like fucking around. <laughs> we get shit out of nowhere. Like when Sophia Bush calls Hutch and says, Hey Hutch, I've been reading this book called The Malleus Demonium. Holy oh shit. My Holy God. shit. She just she just has the Necronomicon. I know. <laughs> I wrote that down. I was like, Sophia Bush. I have this thing. It's taped in blood and has human skin on it. She just has this. She just has a book. <laughs> my name is October and I am a slave. Like, <laughs> do you want to see my my lament configuration too? I have a cult collection. I got it from the Chenard Institute. They were having an antique sale. Uh nice pull she just has the book that says exactly how to beat this lady like she just she goes by the way i just happened to have i'm like where'd you get this (laughs) you have to put nails into her head and burn her blood yeah Yeah, that's how you you have to put nails into her forehead and burn her blood. like what are you talking about (laughs) this is a video game (laughs) this is a bathtub just scratch the disc this is a bathtub (laughs) (laughs) sorry i skipped the scene with the meth head gamestop employee (laughs) i'm so glad we came back to this because here's what i thought (laughs) meth head game stop do you think they hired this guy to play this actor because mm. he so strongly resembled a young tarantino yes see i thought he looked like matt parker a little bit yeah or matt stone rather yeah. yeah well the reason i say the tarantino thing is because if you remember like tarantino worked in a video store sure. it was very energetic and like recommending things to him you know a, a game is just an extension of the mind that created it exactly he's got that same kind of manic energy and right. honestly he kind of does have like a similar chin structure yeah. and eyebrows and everything like and he's staring at Detective King's feet the whole time. The whole time he keeps making comments about him. All right, guys. So like, you know, games. Like, games. you know, you play character, man. Like, you know, you, you become the character. <laughs> you become the character. And, you know, right? Like, you know, Devil May Cry is a game all about big dicks. <laughs> <laughs> It may be an underground game, you know, one that's not in Game Informer. The detective asked the GameStop employee, like, why do people even play this shit? And he goes, because it's so much fun, (laughs) Chad. That was the perfect soundbite for that. But anyways, he asked the guy, do you know who made this game? Yeah. I've never heard of this game. Do you know who made it? And the detective goes, probably some base head in his mom's attic. I'm like, you can't even get the thing right. It's the basement. Basement. (laughs) Nobody's in your mom's attic. They're in the basement, you dumb fuck. Uh. I do like that Detective King is basically like, what if Elliot Stabler had CTE? (laughs) (laughs) That's a good, that's a good reference. Absolutely. But man, he played the game at the crime scene. He died in the game and then he goes to his car and then in the theatrical version, he does the horror movie trope of fixing the rearview mirror. Mm. There's someone in the back seat. We cut to a wide shot. He screams and then the car just explodes with blood. He's killed by sound effect. Yes. yes. He's killed by sound effect. In the director's cut, he gets the hooks in the mouths for a little bit there. Ah. So Yeah, his his chair turns into that contraption. Yeah. 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 And man, I don't remember the context of the scene itself, but <laughs> this is where we get Hutch's backstory. God. And dude, much like that line from Sharknado, Nathan, he talks about, okay, his dad went crazy, <laughs> yeah. tried to burn down their home. Yeah. And in the flashbacks, we see a young Hutch who is engulfed in flames. The mom has been burned alive at this point. Yeah. Right. And he's sitting there in the fire, in the fetal position, watching the fire, and it cuts to a Nintendo controller on on fire <laughs> and dude it cuts back to the real world and he's telling abigail i think he goes that's why i hate fire and i'm like buddy i got news for you most people fucking hate fire yeah. what are you talking about i think she asks him that's why you don't like fire or yeah, something like yeah, that absolutely yeah it makes zero sense because no. it's like dude you know like to exist you kind of need fire yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so like does that mean like when he goes to make top ramen he like flips out when he has to light is stovetop? Like, is that what happens? He freaks out every time someone lights a cigarette. Yes. He like starts oh, wigging out. Dude, when somebody pulls out a lighter, he goes, oh! 
<laughs> oh shit! Fire bad. Imagine this guy at Hibachi. That lighter is the scariest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. Fire bad, man. I want, <laughs> I want someone to take the scene of the controller burning and him crying, and then put that like play it loud slogan from the old Game Boy commercials at the end of it. I think we should put Deftones in there. Put change in the house of flies. <laughs> now I got a question for you guys. Yeah, mm-hmm. is he more upset that his Nintendo NES is melting, or his mom, or is he upset his mom is melting? <laughs> no, he's way more upset that the controller is burning. Yeah. Absolutely. I was almost done with Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> My original copy of Earthbound. <laughs> I was finally going to beat the Joker, damn it. Yeah, I was just about to beat Batman. <laughs> no one's ever beaten Batman. I got news no, for you. No one's ever no, beaten No, you're never ever going to beat Batman. I did it once with save states. Ah. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, you emulated it. You cheater. I cheated. Well, yeah, you got to have the game genie. Mm-hmm. Yes, man. Yeah. Man, I can't believe we're talking about two video game movies fucking back to back for me. <laughs> that I picked. Hey, your fault. I know, I know. <laughs> but then they go to, was it Miller's house that they go to? And they're like, or, or not Miller's, they go to Milo's house. Yeah, yeah Loomis's house. Yeah. He breaks open his computer tower, goes, oh, the cops didn't know where to look. And he finds this PDA thing. <laughs> he finds a scene kick and it's still fully charged. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He finds a scene kick, absolutely. And there's a link in the text that he gets to bailmangames.com. And spoiler alert, it's no longer active because I looked it up. Yeah. But um, at this point, they're like, okay, I found out where the game was developed at. It's at this address. And I got to put a note here. Uh-huh. We're going to do a brief detour, fellas, oh, no. because... Oh, this is this is what you texted me. Okay. This is what I texted you about. I, I stumbled upon something that I have to bring up. Uh-oh. Okay. I looked up the actual address they give in the movie. <laughs> and what comes up is not an address to a physical place. No. Because oh, it's Nirvana? <laughs> absolutely. It's not, a, it's not a physical location. But when you Google the address, uh-huh. the first result that came up, for me at least, oh, no. was this website. And I'm going to show you what I saw. Is it porn? It's not porn, but okay. you, it's porn adjacent. I will ah, say porn that. Porn adjacent. Gotcha. It is a fan fiction website. Yeah. Oh, God. Yes. Nathan, your jaw is going to drop when I show you this, okay? <laughs> so, first of all, I want to say this. I don't want to say this person's name. Oh, no. Because I don't want them to get any heat. Mm-hmm. I don't want to mock them for their, their thing, mm-hmm. but I have to bring this up. So, this person has written fan fiction for this movie. Oh, God, no. I want you to notice a couple of things here. I want you to look at the published date. What? Six months ago. (laughs) It was published in 2023. What? And I want you to also look at the page count and the word count. 74 pages. 26,830 words. Wow. (laughs) Yo. (laughs) So, a couple of things here. The person can't decide if they want to spell Jenny as J-E-N-N-Y or J-E-N-N-E-T. Jenny. Hutch is now hot. Ah. And again, I don't want to mock this person for doing what they enjoy. But I mean, hey, gamers got to play. Gamers got to play. <laughs> gamers got to play. Hey, gamers got to write. That's gamers right. Gamers got to play and write fanfic. Hey, it's cool. Gamers got to write too because this person also joined this fan fiction site in 2022 and has been writing as of three hours ago <sighs> when I looked this up. They were writing Nightmare Before Christmas fan fiction. And what do they refer to themselves as I see in the screenshot? Uh, it says, I'm a wider. I'm a, a wider? <laughs> I'm a wider. A wider. A white. <laughs> a, a white writer? I think they maybe did a poor I don't know. I mean, congratulations. <laughs> Writing is my passion. Writing is my passion. And she says, I hope y'all like the books. Maybe it is supposed to be with a Cajun accent. I hope y'all like them books, all right. They have written fan fiction for Supernatural, Medea. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter, Pirates of the Caribbean. Full Metal Alchemist, the 911 TV show. Scorpion King. The Hell Scorpion yeah. King. She's done Scorpion King. Holy shit. Wow. Oh, man. Maybe if we do any of these other movies on here, we need to revisit and read some of her fan fiction. Inuyasha, Queen of the Damned. Man. Can I do a dramatic reading of like just a passage from one of these at the end of the episode? Maybe. maybe. Okay, here's what I will say. If we do this, we have to do it with complete earnestness and seriousness. Yes. And I feel like that's how we rectify this because again, I don't want to make fun of this person and their writing, but I was just baffled that not only has someone written Stay Alive fan fiction that is 74 pages long, but was updated as of six months ago. Oh. <laughs> you also could read the tags here like we didn't start the fire. <laughs> Cinderella, Goosebumps, Teen Titans, cartoons. <laughs> I love the fact that they put in the published tags, my own stories. My own stories. It's like, 
Really? Oh, I didn't know that that they were your own stories. Were they someone else's stories? Oh, that Billy Joel thing really fucking got me. <laughs> oh, my God. DC, I don't know if you know this, but uh, I used to have a podcast where I read erotic fan fiction. It's been lost to time, sadly. But You should revive that. There's a market for that. You know what? And here's this. If you are this person that, that wrote this material, crying. please reach out at the silver linings playlist at gmail.com. No, no, seriously, please reach out. Out. Yes, yes. I would love to just pick your brain about what drew you to this movie yeah. to, to write. Because 74 pages is fucking nothing to scoff at. No, That's absolutely not. No, th- I, I'm a writer for a living and I have a really hard time writing anything original from the heart that like I don't give up on. Yeah. So like kudos to you. Yeah. yeah. And still updating it as of six months ago. And yes. Genuinely, come on the show. Oh I'll let God. you pick a movie if you want to talk about yes. it. I, we will fly you out to Dustin <laughs> on his own time. <laughs> Oh, let's see, on your dime, but we'll definitely... <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Sorry for that detour. <laughs> Fellas, we're officially at two minutes longer than the movie. Oh, <laughs> uh, we haven't even gotten to the plantation yet. I'm so sorry for taking so much of your time. Oh, up, my Ryan, God. But, uh, oh, man. This is great. Uh, <laughs> I love this. Well... At some point, Frankie Muniz gets annoyed with his own visor. <laughs> he takes it off and he says, this thing is gay. <laughs> oh, no, it's his uh, wrist brace. That's right. Jimmy Simpson said it was earlier. Yeah, that's right. And then he pops his collar. He sure does. So there you go. He really wants a piece of Abigail. He does. <laughs> Absolutely. Ever since the toilet incident, you know, he can't <laughs> stop thinking about it. So this is where they drive out to the address mm-hmm. that they found. And this is where I was confused. I was like, because Hutch and Abigail are holding hands. And I'm like, they've spoken like twice and one of those times was him watching her piss right like, i don't why are they holding hands now yeah and man frankie muniz has a shirt on at this point that says built to game oh. is this when we get abigail's yes. confession yes <laughs> so man the way they pull this off oh my god they're driving to the place and hutch is driving abigail's in the passenger seat and i don't remember what sets it off but they're talking about oh how oh i didn't really know miller mm-hmm. she's literally just there in this group for n- seemingly no reason She's just a fucking weirdo. She's a weirdo. She's just a fucking weirdo drifter. Yeah. Who just happens to be attractive. She's a grief groupie. A grief groupie. (laughs) A grief groupie. Absolutely. A grifting grief groupie. Yes. That's all she is. (laughs) And at some point, Hutch says something like, oh, so that must mean this van is dot, dot, dot. And Abigail says, home sweet home yeah she lied about her parents <laughs> jobs she lied about going to college yeah. and like yeah, she said she went to princeton yeah well, uh, so i wrote down like why it crafts such an uh, he didn't even ask about her folks and like she crafts such an elaborate backstory why not just say like yeah uh, i'm gonna go to princeton and my car isn't a house she like, literally <laughs> lives in a van down by the river she, she does, does. <laughs> I, can't, I could not believe this reveal <laughs> So they get to the plantation, which that's where the address leads them to. Uh-huh. And then in the theatrical version, they completely cut out that they meet the developer of the fucking game. Yeah. Yep. Like you get to the thing and they're like, oh, no one's here. And it's like, well, okay. Yeah. And then it turns out that the plantation itself is the model of the video game. Yeah. Like the building that they arrive in is the same as the one in the game. So in the director's cut, they meet the developer who then tells them, you got to go meet the person who wrote this novel oh. about. Elizabeth Bathory. So then they go meet Alice. It's a fetch quest. They go meet Alice <laughs> Krieg, who is just like, yeah, uh, Elizabeth Bathory was super evil. She bathed in the blood of virgins. Sure. Th- basically gives us this entire backstory. Neither version didn't exist on a plantation. No. Yeah. At all. <laughs> no, she was in like Hungary. <laughs> yeah, it was Hungary in like medieval times. Mm-hmm. Like- I think they literally mixed her and Madame LaLaurie up yeah. because like Madame LaLaurie was in New Orleans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nicholas Cage owned her mansion for a little Wow. Of course he did. <laughs> they mixed Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 8 together. And they're like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Mother Miranda. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So in neither version do they really confidently explain why a video game has this ghost in it. Yeah. There's just a Alice Krieg has a line where she says something along the lines of a powerful enough spell probably could bring her back. But yeah. like, who, <laughs> why? I don't know. Is she a witch too? Yeah. Is that it too? Is is Alice Krieger witch? It would make more sense. It would be stupid, but it would make more sense if, like, they were in on the whole thing. Yeah. Like, right. Same with Abigail. Like, if we're making a movie here, make the movie where things are connected. Because right. as it seems, it's like, 
oh, we tried to make a video game and uh, oops, a ghost got in there. Uh-oh. Like, God, don't you hate it when that happens? I do. I, do. I truly I do. <laughs> and, and, and no no explanation really of why Alice Krieg also plays Elizabeth Bathory. Well, she <laughs> like, doesn't play Elizabeth Bathory. No. They have another person who plays her. I thought it looked like her. It looks very similar to her. Okay. Very similar to her. But yeah, the person who plays her is a, is a Maria Kalanina. Oh, okay. okay. Who plays the Countess. Yeah, the Countess, they call her. Yes. They don't even call her Elizabeth Bathory. They just call her Countess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they start stumbling around this house. It's Frankie Munez who's like, oh, I can pull up the map in the game oh and my guide God. you around this house. Not only guide you around the house, but create things Dude. out of thin air yes. by playing this game. Perceptive reality, man. <laughs> this is fucking <laughs> baffling. So there's a couple things that happen here. First of all, Abigail finds this pair of shears and almost cuts off her own fucking fingers with them for some reason, right. like by mistake. Because she's an idiot. <laughs> and then the movie 100% just fades to black at one point point yes. like she's got a light bulb behind her and it just dims and then like hutch is outside and he goes in the backyard and there's like this huge maze and it's the cemetery and everything yeah and then he hears abigail screaming and he's on the phone with frankie muniz he's like hey h- help me get back to her and then he says oh it's faster to go to the staircase around the side instead of going in the house but you'll need a crowbar i'm like how is that faster right <laughs> i was fucking a- if you need a crowbar to get to anywhere that's not faster <laughs> and then frankie muniz drops a crowbar on the steps in the game yes. and all of a sudden Hutch looks down Dude, and, and the crowbar is there. This is world breaking here. This yep. is insane. If that's the case, drop a gun. Swink is God now. <laughs> <laughs> Newsflash. Much like Sutter Cade, he can make things just happen. <laughs> but no, he does. Because it's the way the shot is, it's Hutch on the staircase and there's like a cellar door above him that he can't get through. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I need some kind of crowbar. In the game, Swink drops one mm-hmm. and then it cuts back and the camera just tilts down and there's suddenly a crowbar there i'm like he's tank from the matrix at this point (laughs) okay that is who he is he's like okay go this way and by the way here's the thing here get this power up oh my god you are blowing my mind this is very matrix like it's like matrix uh, get to the phone booth i can help you get out yeah Oh, my God. And then it cuts to Abigail. She's got bugs crawling all over. She's in the dark. And then, like, there is one pretty good shot in this movie. Uh And it's the shot of Abigail on the floor. And then a pair of gardening shears just appear in front of the camera and open up. And she screams. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. It's cool. We're kind of doing something here. But then Hutch just gets there to her. And then they kiss. And I'm like, why are they kissing? Stop. October's dead at this point. Right. Oh, we did skip over October's entire death. We skipped over October dying, <laughs> oh. which I understand why you skipped over because it was a blink and you miss it type deal. Right. It is such a weird thing. She's like, they're at this place and then like next door is like a building that's like under construction. She mm-hmm. goes, that looks suspicious. Yes. And she just goes over there and then the ghost from the game appears. She tries shooting it with the nail gun. Mm-hmm. Nothing happens. And then she gets strung up. You know, because it's a ghost. Exactly. It's a PG-13 movie. So you get one F-bomb. And she says, fuck you, bitch. Or whatever yeah and then she gets her throat cut and she bleeds out great and no one cares <laughs> and no one cares because we're like we got to go now yeah we still got the blonde ones so don't worry about it that's what we said he's got the the um the backup girlfriend yeah he's got backup girlfriend <laughs> it's the same thing like starship troopers exactly you gotta have a backup girlfriend <laughs> you have a choice between denise richards and uh dizzy and you know if dizzy dies don't worry i got denise richards <laughs> and i gotta say backup girlfriend pretty quietly in case Priscilla, she might not know the context <laughs> so, she's like, what are you talking about excuse me <laughs> but then um abigail and hutch kiss and i'm like please stop making people kiss movies that don't deserve it like, especially if like you're telling me like october was really his girlfriend yes the whole time yeah right? so she's been not even dead for what an hour she's not even cold in the ground yet no she's <laughs> not even cold i actually was wondering did they leave her in that building they, they did just, they, they had the to they did they even said they're like oh we shouldn't have left her it's like okay you really cared about your friend a whole lot didn't you nope <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the movie, there's also no like retribution for that. They're no. not like, we got to go back and get her. No. <laughs> just leave her there. There's also a shot around then where Detective Thibodeau shows up and finds where October's written down a bunch of exorcism rites. Yep. Of course she did. And then they never go back to oh, it. Oh, that's the thing, too. They raid Hutch's apartment because mm-hmm. they're like, look, man, you, this is suspicious that you keep showing up at these crime scenes where people are dead. Right. And then, yeah, they raid his apartment and we never see Wendell Pierce again. Yeah. That whole plot thread just gets dropped. Yeah. It really doesn't pay off in the unrated version either because he just re- reads her notes from the demonium malleus or whatever it's called yeah. it's a necronomicon yeah <laughs> and then has a flashback to king dying which he wasn't there for yeah i can't believe that sophia bush just has the book just just ha- <laughs> she's like in the theatrical cuts she just pulls i it- laughed so fucking hard right <laughs> she just pulls it out she goes by the way i got this book 
It says how to kill video game ghosts. I don't know. Maybe it's relevant. I don't know. I've got this Nintendo power guy. <laughs> oh my God. I have the game informer that tells us. How to I'm just <laughs> saying every goth girl has a library full of demonic books yes. and things. That's fair. That was a new arrival to her, her library yeah. of damned books. This was right between her copy of the complete works of Edgar Allan Poe <laughs> yes. and Sandman uh, nightmares. Absolutely. <laughs> and as I said before, the lemon configuration and, uh, you know, the Necronomicon. Yeah. Sure. All there. She She's also got the Kandarian dagger yes. over the mantle. <laughs> well, you have to have the whole set. Yeah. It comes in a gift box. Well, in case Jason Voorhees shows up. <laughs> you know, now that I'm thinking about it, we talked about Abigail having like this baby voice. Do you think she's intentionally trying to do like a Jennifer Tilly kind of thing? I don't think so. She's trying to be sexy. Yeah. yeah. Creep. <laughs> Sexy creep. I was getting kind of Bride of Chucky vibes a little bit in this movie. Kind of. No. You don't think so? No, no I don't. I don't think. I think she was Put just. Put some respect on Tiffany's name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think she was just trying to do the whole like, I'm demure right. and don't know anything about games. Do you think it was also maybe just a ruse to like get, a, a, you know, a warm bed and a hot meal? I like... think she wanted to honestly steal people's like organs, but you know, because the black market. <laughs> I believe that because when she gets trapped in that dungeon, she like sucks on his finger. Oh yeah. my seconds. god! It's what fucking the, weird. His dirty fucking fingers, dude. You're touching everything in this old house. He touched that crowbar. We got to talk about my Ugh. favorite shot in this movie, Ooh. which is they escape from the attic, <laughs> run through the cemetery while being chased by the horse-drawn carriage. <laughs> oh my and god! I forgot about Frankie Muniz. The Hutch holds up a rose, and the carriage like explodes around him, and yeah. it looks like something out of a Switchfoot music video or like Creed <laughs> or something like it. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. It's amazing. I remembered exactly one thing about this movie before rewatching it. Okay. Because I think it was in some kind of promotional material before the movie came out, but it was Frankie Muniz shouting, bitch, that's cheating. <laughs> like, that's the only thing I remembered about this movie. And then, yeah, like, we find out, oh, not only do you not have to even play the game, but she can play for you. Sure. Because the rules, who cares about the fucking rules at this point? Right. Lord Raiden, the rules are quite, quite simple. Clear. <laughs> They're quite clear. <laughs> yeah, that's quite clear. He's running through the cemetery. This horse-drawn carriage is coming after him. And then, yeah, Hutch steps out, does the rose petal thing. Swink gets stuck in a bramble. He does. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Frankie Muniz, man. Like, he just gets shit on this whole movie. Uh -huh. And then, like, I noticed it here when they're out in the backyard. But this whole movie has, like, a fucking vignette around the edges of it. Yes. I hate that so much. It's so awful. Yep. And I noticed it actually watching I, I watched Bottoms two days ago yep. mm -hmm. and it has the same thing. They have like a vignette around the whole screen. I'm like, why are Congratulations, we... Congratulations, you realized how to throw a filter yeah. over your whole screen. Right. This movie does feel like an Instagram filter come to life. Yeah. It's all shot in MySpace angles. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> no, I just don't, I don't understand the vignette thing. I don't get it. Because it's supposed to look spooky. Yeah. I get, and if you do, do that, it makes it look spooky. But why did I see it in Bottoms? Like, <laughs> There's also a lot of like Netflix shows that do that yeah. especially like horror super like all of chilling adventures of sabrina is shot like they just rubbed the corners of the lens with ham <laughs> like <it laughs> that was actually we moved so on to ham <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, and then she's getting left alone here mm -hmm. and Hutch is like I, I gotta go up to the top of the tower that's where her body is and then she's got this rose and she's doing this he loves me he loves me not thing Why? I'm like girl what <laughs> hang on to that rose I wrote down girl get help <laughs> yeah. yeah it's like you're destroying the rose in front of you that could save your life right and then we fade to black again like the shit was edited for TV what are you doing <laughs> this is where we see that Elizabeth Bathory is still juicy oh yeah so like hundreds of years and she's still going she's still she looks good. Well, I mean, at this point, she's got a couple blood sacrifices already. That's so, you true. know, she does. She got a couple of them souls sucked. <laughs> if we're thinking about this in terms of like the mummy mythology, sure. like, you know, like Imhotep type stuff, uh -huh. she's pretty flush yeah. with some blood sacrifice. See, that would have been a thing. Like in the mummy, you've got. We needed Benny in this movie. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I was going to say, you know, in the mummy, we you've got him trying to get people to bring her back. Yeah. yeah. You should have revealed here. That's what Abigail did. She was just trying to get people there. We have made a better movie yeah. than this movie yeah. in this whole episode. Elizabeth Bathory would like to thank you for playing her game <laughs> and for your Man. eyes. Oh my god. Okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is perfect. Your finger was delicious, by the way. <laughs> Jimmy Simpson is the Benny of your movie. Uh -huh. Frankie Muniz is that one guy that they just keep taking parts off of. Yeah. Like, oh, he takes yeah. his eyes and yeah. his tongue. This is coming together perfectly. Stupid superstitious bastard. <laughs> and then look, Sophia Bush is playing the Rachel Weisz character, like the one that's just knowledge about this whole fucking thing. Yeah. She's got the books and everything. Yep. This is coming together quite nicely, fellas, yeah. I gotta say. Odette Fair is Detective Thibodeau. <laughs> and Abigail is Noxonomon. 
Yes. <laughs> Do you think this is what that fan fiction is that girl wrote? I oh hope my so. God. I mean, the mummy was one of the tags. <laughs> we We've just given her so right. many, so many, so many ideas. I love it. Oh, you're absolutely right. She did fucking tag the mummy. This is like, <laughs> this is a great think tank, fellas. Oh my God. We got to do this more often. Brian, we got to bring you on the show more often. We yeah. got to come up with better ways to fix these movies. I will be your film doctor for you if you want. <laughs> our, our uncredited script doctor. There you just go. Hanging in the wings. We'll bring you back for 365 days the, the next, next day, day or whatever it's called. It's called 366 days. Dude, there's three of those fucking movies. Ugh. It's fucking wild. All of them 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, of course they are. 0%. <laughs> of course they are. So, yeah, he finds this dead body out there. He puts a bunch of nails into it, and then it doesn't work. She spits the nails out. She sits up like Michael Myers. She does. She does do a Michael Myers sit up. She spits the nails out, and then, like, he sets her on fire. I kind of like this visual of the nail, like, working its way out of her forehead. Yeah. I yeah. thought that was pretty good. It was cool. Yeah, it's fine. I'm just looking for anything at this point. <laughs> well, speaking of looking at things, mm. he pulls out his Alienware laptop. <laughs> I can't believe this is how they pay this shit off. Yeah, yeah. It's got a reflective surface on it and that's what kills this woman she can't look he at her. does a clash of the titans he does to save his ass he does i wrote down he hits her with the old dream master trick <laughs> yes the old dream master <laughs> trick the medusa clash of the titan shit oh. it's the same fucking thing God. absolutely so this room's on fire and like oh you got to burn the witch's blood and then finally you got to show her it was another one of those things where i was like stop introducing rules if they don't matter I like know. at one point they say oh, she only appears at night yeah. that's not not true and now i'm like i guess he didn't need the nails dude like, we're five minutes from the credits stop introducing new ways to get rid of this monster right. <laughs> plus like he gets that memory adr that pops in <laughs> right. you know from liam mcpoyle saying like yeah you know this thing it's unbreakable it's oh. a polycarbonate thing like plastic on a laptop yeah and i'm like dude plastic can break yes yeah. like you're telling me the supernatural creature that has bent the rules for the entire fucking movie. Right. Can't break your plastic laptop. To win your next battle, use the element that brings life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, that's, that element is semen. I'm telling you, that would have been <laughs> use the element that brings life. This is, I don't know. Okay. What do you think is a worse product placement? Mm. Like, clearly stop the movie dead to do this or in that Transformers movie where that Bud Light truck flips over and Mark uh, Wahlberg picks one up off the ground in fucking China. I would go with that one. <laughs> that one. That one's pretty bad. Didn't the first Transformers movie, though, have like a Mountain Dew Decepticon? What? Well, they've all had it. Yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah, that's the thing with the Transformers movies, because the fact that regular ordinary devices can transform, yeah. it opens them up completely to product placement. That's so yeah, true. they've all done it. I don't know. Krispy Kreme and the Power Rangers remake ooh, was pretty egregious. Ooh, that yeah. one was pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty bad. Yeah, but this is a product placement that is literally designed to stop the villain of the movie. As a plot device. Yeah. 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 I don't know. It was pretty bad. I wish it was a Mad Cat's controller. So just like some <laughs> fucking some knockoff stoop, shit. Some stupid shit. <laughs> That's a Logitech camera. I love uh, the power glove. It's so bad. <laughs> it is. <laughs> God damn it. But yeah, they escape. Frankie Muniz is still alive. Abigail's still alive. Hutch is still alive. Yay. Yay. Yeah, yeah, hooray. Abigail can get that liver out of Hutch <laughs> and get back in her van and uh, go to another funeral and, you know, seduce another grieving person. God damn it. This is the end of the movie. We cut back to that game store. Sure. And man, I don't even know how to explain this, but... The video game store employee opens this box and there's all these stay alive video games. Mass produced. Yes. Packaged in their cases and everything. Mm -hmm. And he goes and puts it into um, like the display PlayStation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not only that, the game informer that's right there on the shelf is full on talking about stay alive. Yeah. This game no one's ever heard of is in the latest edition of Game Informer. I know. As a cover story. <laughs> the camera tilts up and it's like, you know, when you went into Blockbuster and they'd have these TV. TVs mounted on the walls yeah. and like they would be playing random shit that does that and the video game starts up and you hear a bunch of people reciting the fucking prayer from the beginning of the game and right. like boy they were trying so hard to rip off the ending of the ring yes like, they were if we just mass produce this thing you know it's that it's lawnmower man yep. it, it's like <laughs> and I also love that the MSRB had the wherewithal to rate this game in for mature mm -hmm. like I thought that was real a nice touch no, it's, it's smart that they played the game mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're able to then, you know, survive long enough <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> to rate it. <laughs> uh, they're like, yeah, yeah, I played the game. It's pretty good. Uh, it's an M. Five minutes later, dead. Yeah, that, that was my thing. I was like, I was, my last night of the movie, I was like, I'm going to break apart how this whole thing doesn't make any more fucking sense and it already doesn't make <laughs> The entire staff of Game Informer is dead in dead. a ditch somewhere. Dead. Like, <laughs> IGN, dead. dead. <laughs> like, everyone, all of them dead. Dead. Oh my God, that's so funny. And that's, that's the end of the movie. Yeah. It's just people reciting this prayer as this video game fucking 36 by 36 pixel looks at you. Like, <laughs> DC, I don't know if this happened for you, but when the movie ended, Amazon very helpfully started auto-playing Cruel Intentions oh, after that. Oh, fuck yeah. No, I, I gotta tell you, as soon as that cut to black, turned the TV off. I didn't even bother. I was like, no way, I'm watching the credits. You're so scared. Yeah, I was too fucking scared. Oh. Luckily, I was in bed already. This is the scariest fucking movie I've seen in my life. <laughs> Thank God Bay didn't show up in this movie. It's so fucking scary. I mean, Cruel Intentions is a good, like, you know, palate cleanser sure. for this movie. Yeah, absolutely. Literally anything else after this movie anything. would be a good palate cleanser. Oh, God. Paint drying. A video of paint drying. Yeah, that's good to watch. Put on that nine hour David Lynch paint drying movie. It's probably going to be better than this. Yeah. Oh my god, and that's stay alive, fellas. We oh, did it. We stayed alive. We, we sure fucking did, didn't we? Uh, and John Travolta lands that dance move yeah. in that final <laughs> scene of that movie. Those that skip forward, you know, <laughs> John Travolta land that dance move. Any, uh, any final thoughts, fellas, about 2006's Stay Alive? <sighs> I hated this. I, I really did, did too. <laughs> I really did not like this movie at all. My triumvirate of like worst movies that we've covered on this show is I would say Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom Oof. 365 days Ugh. and 2006's Stay Alive <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta say it that way should we go ahead and talk about recommendations yeah should we go ahead and say I fucking dare you to watch this movie from start <laughs> to finish without averting your eyes yeah like I think I'm comfortable saying this is the worst movie we've ever covered this is barely a movie like in the entire like in your entire podcast I think so damn I think in terms of quality there is nothing here there's no performance that's worth Worth it. There's no direction. The cinematography is crap. The editing sucks. The score is fucking awful. I mean, you guys clearly haven't had, haven't w- reviewed Cool Cat Saves the Kids yet. So, <laughs> no, we have not. No, we have not. My <laughs> podcast, we're three hundred, oh, nearly three hundred episodes in. Yeah, we have reviewed some stinkers, man. Hell yeah. I'm sure. We've definitely done some bad movies, but this one's pretty bad. Unwatchable. Yeah. You know what's funny is I was gonna say absolutely don't watch it, but now that I know that there's a whole world of Stay Alive fan fiction out uh. there that probably. <laughs> <laughs> you know thrives from context yeah i gotta wonder if they improved on the problems yeah. in stay alive in the fanfic like, i would almost feel like you have to like if they really did maybe do the the lord's work yeah in fixing how bad this fucking movie is sure i'm gonna say something bold here i would rather have a double feature of the flash and sleepers back to back than ever watch this movie again mm. it's unwatched like you cannot pay attention to this movie yeah you also said under the Cherry Moon is unwatchable. That's and true. I, I, can I stand by. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'd probably watch Ghostbusters Answer the Call over this one. Oh, wow. any day. And I really hated Ghostbusters Answer the Call. Like, sure. There are very few times, I don't know if you guys do this, where you go to the movie theater and you know the movie's going to be bad. Yeah. yeah. And so you sit there and you're like hate watching it. Sure. Yeah. Because we reviewed Ghostbusters Answer the Call and I... I totally was hate watching that film. I was like, I hate this on so many levels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And no, it's not because they're female Ghostbusters. It's just called it's a stupid fucking movie. <laughs> no, the script is bad. Yeah. So like, I'd watch that over Stay Alive. Ugh. I had that experience seeing the first Michael Bay Ninja Turtles yeah. in the theater. Uh-huh. And a friend of mine <laughs> looked over at me and they said, they, they just started laughing. And I said, what's wrong? And they said, your arms are folded and you're glaring. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just... <laughs> I didn't even realize that I had a visceral reaction to that movie. Uh, I did that with the Nightmare on Elm Street remake. Yeah. And then I did that also with Rise of Skywalker, Oof. where I'm like, I know this is going to be bad. Mm-hmm. I know I'm not going to have a good time. Rise of Skywalker hurt my feelings. Yes. Like, movies don't <laughs> usually hurt my feelings. It was poking me in the chest for two and a half hours. Yeah. I didn't like that movie. Dude, I took past and potentially future guest Adam Camfer to mm-hmm. his first Star Wars movie, and it was Rise of Skywalker. He I'm was so like, sorry. Well, he was like, are they always like this? I'm like, no. I'm, like, no. I'm so sorry. No. I, mean, I knew this was going to be bad, uh. but I did not expect this level of bad dark magic clones Ugh. who knows i mean somehow palpatine returned who knew uh, fuck you movie <laughs> fuck you movie and fuck you stay alive from yeah. 2006 Seriously. directed by william brent bell oh man oh let's let's jump over to prop cop fellas 
And if you're new listening to the show, Prop Cop is where the three of us are going to look at all of the props in this movie stay alive. And I'm going to say even the props in the game stay alive. Yeah, cool. And uh, we're each going to cop one for ourselves. Brian, you are our guest of honor on this episode. What is a prop, if any, that you would like to own for yourself from Stay Alive? I mean, at first I thought the Necronomicon <laughs> that October has, but I really thought about this, uh-huh. you know, and I think that the Game Informer yeah. would be worth a shit ton of money it yeah. because be, yeah. all of the people who die from playing the game, oh my god, yeah, they're gonna pull that thing. So if I own that, I'd make a killing off of it. That's great. You know what, Nathan? This mm. is kind of crazy because now that I'm thinking about it, last week's episode was In the Mouth of Madness, yeah. mm-hmm. which was a book that if you read, you went fucking crazy. Yeah. And here it's a game you play, and you go fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. So we're kind of we're kind of stretching the pantheon here. You know what I mean? I love it. I said I wanted Abigail's camera just so she won't use it anymore. <laughs> so because it is just insufferable. Like what a crazy thing to do as a person to go to other people's funerals and take their pictures without their consent. Right. You know, there's tons of like victims on that camera, right? Yeah. Like there's tons tons of victims she's gotta have like this is gotta be like her 17th camera because they gotta be constantly getting broken by the people there i feel like when you hear the camera flash sound effect from texas chainsaw it should <laughs> then do a reverse shot it's, and it's her standing there it's just abigail she's like i'm putting this in my portfolio to get into princeton oh my god amazing what if she is uh related to letterface get him cuz <laughs> do your thing cuz <laughs> God damn it. Nathan, what do you want? So I had also considered the Game Informer because I used to have a subscription to Game Informer Ooh. that actually like, made me really nostalgic seeing that on screen. Yeah. Wow. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting married next year. I want to show up in style. Uh, I want that horse drawn carriage. carriage. Nice horse. <laughs> Ridden by a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> ghost ride the whip. <laughs> ghost ride the whip. <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's talk about bit part. Okay. And bit part is where, you know, sometimes in these movies, there's these background characters <laughs> or these unnamed extras that just have like a brief, you know, they, they have their moment in the sun yeah. and we want to be those people. We want to recast them as ourselves. Nathan, who is a unnamed smaller character? that you would like to play in this movie. This was tough because yeah. there's almost no characters in this movie I aside know. from our core folks. I know. Yeah, there's no really background ones. So I picked someone from the video game. You see them in the trailer very briefly, but that first little child ghost that crawls across the wall, that's, <laughs> that's who I want to be. Speaking of that, you know, when they're making their characters for the game, it is crazy that Frankie Muniz is able to not only put the same exact visor that he is wearing in real life into the game, but <laughs> yeah. position it the same way yeah. and also wear the same t-shirt, I think. Absolutely. Listen, this game is very advanced. It's very advanced. Okay. We've been told that multiple times that the game is very advanced. Yeah. I wrote down, I want to be whoever was driving that horse-drawn carriage just so I get to run over Jimmy Simpson because I'm glad <laughs> he's fucking dead. I'm glad he's dead. Brian, what about you? Oh, pig mask guy. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Best part in the whole movie. I, ca- I still cannot believe <laughs> that not only is he balls deep in that wall bed, but then they both have a conversation with Milo V in the doorway, and she goes, uh, you're such a perv. I'm like, I'm pretty sure you have someone inside you right now, <laughs> as you're saying. <laughs> What are you talking about? I'm just saying, like, that guy, he's got work, what, one day? Yeah. He gets to wear a mask. He gets to be with with an actor. It's like, hey, yeah, have a good time. That guy, that character's name is Rex. He was played by a guy named Billy Slaughter. Slaughter. Of course. (laughs) Of course his name is Billy Slaughter. (laughs) Whose filmography is longer than I am tall. Like, it is fucking wild. Good for him. Him and uh, Dick Warlock need to be in a movie together. (laughs) God damn. Did a movie called Mona Lisa and the Blood Moon, which I uh, want to see just because of the title. Sure. He was in Geostorm. Geostorm! (laughs) (laughs) Well, at the end of this movie, seemingly, a lot of people are going to be subjected to this god-awful video game and the horrors. Gamers got a game. (laughs) Gamers got to (laughs) play. All these real gamers are... (laughs) Are in for a surprise when they play Stay Alive. So when you say it, there's like real venom in it. Like gamers. <laughs> gamers. Oof. You got to hit that A-Y real hard. Gamers. I feel that in my stomach right? when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk what our silver linings are for 2006's Stay Alive. 
Any volunteers? Uh, I'll, I'll go. go. Ooh, <laughs> I love how you both are eager. Let's hear them. All right. So the only <laughs> silver lining that I can see here <laughs> from this whole scenario is that Elizabeth Bathory will look young and smoking <laughs> yeah. forever. Yes. With the amount of blood sacrifices that she is getting. That's good. This is a real Mally answer yeah. but for the show, by the way. <laughs> she will never age Ever. <laughs> she's going to be picking up Beetlejuice, you know, because of how good she's going to be looking in the spirit world. I'm just saying. Great. I love that. Love that. Nathan? Uh, that GameStop employee is about to play the best game he's ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and potentially the last. Ooh. So let me get straight. I got to re- reset this thing to, <laughs> to get the game started. I have one that's kind of world breaking for this ending of this movie, love but it. I'm going to give my real answer first, which is no one in their right mind will spend their hard-earned money on this garbage fucking game so sure. no harm no foul as far as i'm concerned yes they will well yes they will that's part two of my silver lining is <laughs> whoever does probably isn't the most intelligent consumer anyway so that's one less moron off the street love it so there you go but my world breaking one is which i you know when i start to think about the implications of this the ending of this movie technically they killed elizabeth bathory and right. unless they manufactured all these copies of the game after the events took place at the end of the movie there's no threat here no you know what i mean like i got a retort for that what if abigail is elizabeth bathory oh. see that would have been great if at the end of the movie what if she's really elizabeth bathory i got it for you okay so they're walking down the street at the end it's you know the three of them and a- a hutch and abigail holding hands yeah the camera's filming them from behind as they walk away she turns around ghost face <laughs> elizabeth bathory's face on abigail's face i'm watching you two compose fan fiction and in real time. <laughs> <laughs> And you know you what? loved this movie. I, I think I might secretly love this movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's say this, boys. Let's say if you watch Stay Alive and you either regret that you did or that you're so fucking scared by the endings <laughs> that you need a movie to pick you up, yeah. to uh, put you in better spirits, to balance things out. What's a movie that people would love to double feature with Stay Alive? <sighs> I'll go ahead and say mine. Okay. It's another movie about someone playing a video game and it having effects on the real world. Mm. And I'm going to go with The Last Starfighter. That's nice. a good one. Yeah. Classic. That's a really good one. I like that one. Nathan, what are you going to watch? I went with a movie I recently saw for the first time. Oh, boy. From 1993, directed by the late, great Albert Pion, Arcade, a movie in which some kids get sucked into a video game and it plays like Tron with F-bombs. Nice. Ooh. It's pretty terrible, but I had a fun time with it. Okay. Full Moon Entertainment. Oh, it always boy. Comes okay. Through. Of course. Now I know what you're talking about. All right. <laughs> Brian, what are you going to watch? Because, in essence, what we're talking about here is media killing you <laughs> in various ways. Uh-huh. I think I got to go with the 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 OG media killing you, and that is the ring. Yes. You know, the whole concept of your, your VHS tape potentially killing you yeah. after seven days. I mean, this movie looks like it was filmed on a VHS tape. It so. does. It does. <laughs> also, we got to give props to that movie because Brian Cox's death scene oh in my that God. film is one of the <laughs> wildest fucking things I've ever seen in a movie. <laughs> it is crazy. I will find myself occasionally just looking it up on YouTube. I'm like, I'm going to rewatch this. <laughs> like, it brings me such joy. Uh, this shit is so fucking bananas. Yeah. It's so fucking bananas. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. We got to do the ring some point on this show. That I, movie, I, I rewatched it a couple years ago. It's gorgeous. Holds like, up. It's really good. It still holds up. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. It's a good early 2000s movie. For better or worse, it like set a template for like the next decade yeah. of yeah. Hollywood thrillers, too. Yeah. It's a shame Gore Verbinski got shunned to the Pirates movies mm-hmm. after that. But like, man, I would love to see him revisit horror. He did. He made uh, The Lone Ranger. Well, oh, that's God. a good point. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brian, thank you so much for coming on the show for this awful movie. <laughs> no, I'm glad you, I'm glad you, you, you gave me this one to talk about. Because if you gave me a good one, it'd be tough. <laughs> <laughs> I almost feel like that would be true with our show, too. Like yeah, sure. If we tried to talk about a good movie every once in a while. What am I talking about? We just did Mortal Kombat. Um, <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Can you plug your show for us, for our listeners? Yeah, so uh, like you guys, I do a movie podcast called The Cinema Psycho Show. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're almost at 300 episodes, and I'll give you guys a sneak peek at what our episode 300 is going to be. Oh, boy. Exclusive. We haven't announced this yet, so you guys are getting kind of exclusive. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me me give you the proper sound cue. (laughs) (laughs) I thought you were going to click the Law and Order one. (laughs) (laughs) I can. There you go. Awesome. (laughs) 
So we are going to be covering the movie 300. Oh, Hell yeah. Man. All right. Yeah. Oh, boy. Fun. Which is going to be fun because uh, upon rewatching it, it's really bad. Oh, yes. I'm sure. Really, really bad. I think I fell asleep during that movie. <laughs> I saw that in the theater. Me and too. And loved it at the time. Yep. I rewatched it two or three years ago and was baffled. Yeah. I, I could not believe what I was seeing. Yeah. It's a, a visual garbage heap. It very much is. Yeah. It looks terrible. But yeah, so that's our, our 300th episode is going to be coming up but yeah we talk about b movies cult films oh man popular films too you know you know we've, we've covered those sorts of things but we're on all the podcast platforms just search for the cinema psycho show on your podcast platform of choice and i'd appreciate if you followed us yeah we love those sorts of things yeah get those guys a follow please and uh if you want to hear nathan and i talk about adam sandler's yes. jack and jill with these guys yes go check that episode out a movie full of canceled actors <laughs> <laughs> i have some hot takes too on that episode so yeah. go check that out. Uh, it was a funny time. And I guess next time we have you back on, we'll have to have John on as well. Yeah. Yep. yep. We'll have to have John on. Check those guys out, the Cinema Psycho Show. And mm-hmm. if you want more of our show, you know, you can get us wherever you're listening to right now. You can get our back catalog and our future episodes. We ask that you, uh, of course, subscribe, rate, leave some feedback, all of the good podcast stuff that I'm sure you are familiar with if you listen to any other show. You can follow us on social media at Twitter and Instagram and TikTok if you search the Silver Linings playlist and over on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash Silver Linings playlist. We have, I think, four more movies left this season mm-hmm. before we take our break. And next week, inadvertently, is also my pick. Uh-huh. And fellas, I'm going to need your help oh. with my clue for what we're going to be talking about next week. So I'm going to repeat some stuff here. And I would just want you guys to chant with me, if you will, please. Okay. okay. So next week, I will prove to you all that I am, I am. a revolutionary. A revolutionary. Thank you very much. That's all I need. So <laughs> next week, we're going to figure out what that is. And if schedules permit... We're going to have two guests returning with us for finally a good movie. I'm so excited. We'll see. God bless them. We'll see if they can make it. But uh, again, thank you, uh, Brian, for coming on the show. Great having you. Oh, absolute pleasure. This was a blast. Rest in peace, Oatmeal. And Elizabeth Bathory. And October. <laughs> and Swink. No, no Swink, Swink lives. lives. Phineas. 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 God, the fucking names in this fucking movie. <laughs> you know what? I take back my rest in peace to them. Rest in peace, Oatmeal and Oatmeal alone. Oatmeal alone. <laughs> and uh, as always... I actually get a boner in moments like these. (laughs) Gamers got a game. Gamers got to play. Excelsior. 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 Look it up. Somebody ran my brother down in a horse-drawn carriage. Hello, YouTube. If you've made it this far, thanks. Could you do us one more favor? Could you hit those like and subscribe buttons? Maybe leave us a comment on what you think of the show. We'd really appreciate it. Join us again next week for an all-new episode. Bye.